Welcome to episode 44 of the official Geek Speak podcast. I was not trying to accent there. I like that. I guess I'm getting that Irish. Let's do, let's do the whole thing Irish. I could totally do Irish. We're offending our Irish audience. Do we have an uh, Irish audience? <laughs> according to Spotify, we at least have in the past. Um, welcome to episode 44 of the official Geek Speak podcast. I'm your host, Sean, and as always is my co-host, Josh, funnier than Joe Coy, Rudy Rudolph. This is a podcast where we usually watch movies, make movies, play games, and more. What more can you ask for? I like you added the usually to that. I have added the past few times, but I said it a different inflection this time, so it came out weirder. I don't know. You call, you said I'm funnier than Joe Coy. I will take it. It's true. Have you you heard of what his monologue was, right? I've literally refused to watch it just because I've heard it's awful. Oh, we're, we're discussing it today later. Oh, goody. Oh. <laughs> Um, I'll I'll bring up the speed, okay? Don't worry. Shh, great. Um, have you watched anything good lately? Before, what am I saying? What is this show? What is this? We're, this is Geek Speak. We're some white nerds doing white That's... nerd shit. <laughs> yep, I'm not gonna argue with that. That's accurate. Okay, the show. <laughs> Welcome, new listeners, if you're new. Um, this is the show where myself and my friend Josh here are both filmmakers and movie lovers and i'm just obsessed with pop culture in general so this show is taking a dive through pop culture journeying through all sorts of different avenues of it most episodes we go through a different disney channel original movie or dcom for short and we'll see how in a short period of time like 20 years ish how the biggest media company on earth disney caters towards solely children with a large sample size and we'll see quality changes etc um and mostly kind of just judging how their you know filmmaking toward children audience changes um and today that's not not uh Today, that's, that's happening. It's not, it's not different. We're watching, we watched Luck of the Irish. One people have probably heard of this one, actually. One that I've actually watched and did not remember a goddamn thing of. And, and we'll get to that soon. <laughs> Cause, oh, we will. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's quite an interesting experience. And after that point, we'll go through our news of the week. And this time it's a like week and a half. Sorry. And it's news involving movies, some TV stuff, some award show stuff, etc. You know. We're going to be talking about Kingpin. We'll be talking about Nolan versus Peloton Instructor. We'll be talking about Echo, um, the award shows, and interesting things happening there, and so much other stuff. And then later today, our main topic will be the history of the DCEU, now that it has a complete pin in that forever. It's a bomb put away. And then we'll end the day today with a call, thing called Super Weird Stories, which we'll explain when we get there. Josh, have you watched anything good the past week or so? We last recorded on the 3rd. Uh, I have. Give me one moment. I must go grab something. Hey, y'all. This is uh, Smooth Jazz Time. I'm your host, the jazziest host, Sir Jazz a lot. Welcome to the show, my own secret show, where Josh is away getting his drugs and I'm here jazzing it out. We don't have music today. It's just audible jazz, like... You know, the true jazz. You know what else is jazz? Medicine. Not bad drugs, but good drugs. Now that's jazz. You know what else is jazz? Thanos. So jazzy. I saw you talking. What were you talking about without me here? <laughs> you will find out. Oh, boy. Now I that, can't now, wait. <laughs> now that's jazz. Okay. <laughs> What have I been watching? Uh, I started the Ted show on Peacock. Pr way funnier than I thought it was going to be. You yeah. like it? People hate it. Oh, I I really like it. I'm digging the humor of it. I saw Ferrari. Pretty good. Pretty good. Saw the color purple. Really, really loved it. Made me you saw the musical version? Yes. Cool. Made me cry like a bitch. And then I just saw the Mean Girls musical. Also pretty good. Since you last recorded, uh, I have watched Paddington 1 and 2. Hell yeah. Poor Things, which we'll get to in our year in review, which is either next episode or the one after that, so end of January. And we're on time this year for that. I watched Meet the Robinsons again. I watched Asteroid City again. I finally saw Anyone But You. That was very fun. Nice. Uh, I think Anyone But You. I mean, it's it's just literally Shakespeare's Much Do About Nothing. We I watched original Mean Girls, and I will say that was so fetch. I watched School of Rock for the first time. I gave it three out of five stars because I'm too scared to make it lower. <laughs> I think it's so bland. And I know people love it. And I know it's, it's, it probably was fun when you were a kid. Looking at it now, 
I can't stand it. It's a I don't like Music Man, and this is an adaptation of that, sort of, and it's loose, and it doesn't work either. You should watch the Nickelodeon sitcom version of School of Rock they made so like I've heard. a couple years ago. <laughs> I will say, I did like Mike White on Survivor, and he wrote and was in this. Yeah. We also watched Luck of the Irish, which we'll get to in a minute, but... Did I, tell, I, don't, did I mention this last time I watched the Escape Room movies? I don't know if I said that on the podcast. I don't think you did. Both of them, both of them are okay. There's I, not enough said in each. Like they're not saying something when they really should be. Yeah, it's like they have potential to be, like, really interesting, but they play it too safe. And like, I'm not saying in terms of, like, the rating. I'm just saying it in terms of what they're doing. Yeah. The second one is also not believable at all. It's not believable, but it's far more entertaining. I can get behind their all in one stone building. Sure. The second one, we've kidnapped the subway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have changed your flight and everything. We had the entire police on our side. What is going on? And it's been almost three years now since that one, and I have no idea if they're making another one. Would you want another one? I'd watch another one. I as long as if it answers questions, then yes. <laughs> we are gonna get into it now with the next thing, which is Luck of the Irish, our decom of this time how in the um, hell do we get into that with escape room well that's not it's not just we're transitioning it's we're out of one prison and into the prison of decons <laughs> it's a prison we can uh, never escape we will event actually here's an actual question for you if uh, we keep up our pace and do a uh, episode about every week will we eventually have decoms will we catch up we've never tried this before so we will have to find we out we tried it in the first few weeks did we know? <laughs> yes, I know because I was on bed rest for some of it. Anyway, surgeries are so fun. Luckily, Irish. What was this movie? I. So here's the thing. Who doesn't know? My heritage actually is Irish. Crazy, uh, Mr. Sean Williams. <laughs> I please don't have my middle name. I'm, I'm on not gonna. This. I'm not. I'll cut it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My, uh, I'm like very Irish and German in my blood, and I will say. I am not Irish to the point where I have family recipes. I'm not Irish to the point where I, like, have already touched that side of my family very much because we, I came to America at that point very early on. Um, and I've been far away from that at this point. But, like, I have questions for people who are actually Irish. I thought this was incredibly offensive, actually. I would love to know how offensive this is. <laughs> Because while I'm watching it, it, I'm just like, I feel like if I was Irish, I would be livid. This feels vaguely offensive on every detail. They also treat, like, Irish food as disgusting. Irish traditions as weird. They treat it as, like, but aren't we glad we're American? <laughs> and, like, <laughs> it's kind of the whole vibe is like, ugh, the Irish. Am I right? It Yeah, it really does feel like that. It's... It's so strange, like, the filmmaker just had, like, a particular disdain with the Irish for some reason. I mean, they talk about how, how hard the Irish fought uh, to get, like, out of uh, the, all the everything they went through when they came to America and stuff. Okay, then maybe address that more instead of, like, the lucky coin? <laughs> you see, that part killed me, not because I found the Irish's struggle to be funny, but because they were... <laughs> But because specifically the old white man was saying this to a person that was not white either. Yeah. I'm just like, buddy, I don't doubt that your you know family had struggles. I'm willing to bet the non-white person probably went through even worse things. And is probably going through them right now. What's crazy, genuinely crazy, is that like a long time ago, people didn't consider Irish people white. Fascinating. Are you aware of this? I think I've learned about that, maybe? Like that's like... Like when they're, they're often like they're a lesser white flat people, which I think is insane. Um, that's also why like people who are Irish change their names early on and stuff when they get American, etc. It's crazy. Irish Ireland does have a really interesting history, um, as well as like Irish ancestry here in America has a very interesting history. But that's not what this movie's about. No, this movie is about a boy who likes to play basketball and is so good at everything. The girls love him. The boys probably love him. <laughs> everything he does is golden. <laughs> And he wears a special necklace that he's never taken off for his entire life, like 13 years old or whatever. He's the most bisexual icon at that school. <laughs> he really is. Um, for a time being, until he takes a necklace off. We'll get to that. The opening of the movie is wild. Just eyes. Opens literal it's, eyes. It's such a lucid 
dream kind of thing where I it's the vibes of this movie is so weird. <laughs> like whenever he's at school and or anywhere else, it's it feels like it's a normal like teen Disney Channel movie. When he's at his house, it is the most A24 esque psychological thriller weird vibes thing you can imagine. Like his parents just have a perpetual smile on their face and always just like what, what do you mean, son? We have no heritage. We've always been here. And just, like, their smile progressively gets, like, bigger and bigger, saying, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. I think if this movie had, I told you this earlier already, if this movie had um no mention of Ireland in the title, no mention of Ireland in the plot, uh, and, and the synopsis or whatever, or any ads, just focused on, like, the mystery of it, let it like, go a little longer, and then all of a sudden his parent, if he was really leading into the idea of the, his parents being horror villains... <laughs> Because it starts out, they're really creepy, and one line from them is, he asked them, they have, they have Heritage Day coming up at school, which is a fine thing. It's like, oh, okay, that seems very cute and fun, or whatever. And then he asks his parents, you know, where are we? And they're like, we're from Cleveland. And they say, we're Americans, Kyle. That's all the heritage we need. <laughs> and that's kind of the whole theme the movie is actually saying. Whether it's not trying to or not, it's saying that. It's like, it's saying, like, no matter where you're from, we're all American. And we get that in the end very strongly. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of... Okay, so the, the actual thing in this movie is this kid says to his parents, well, what's my heritage? I want... You know, heritage, heritage is coming up. They don't tell him where he's from. They're scared to say that they're Irish and they're also a leprechaun. Uh, his mom's a leprechaun. Uh, and the, he has a necklace on. I said it makes him really lucky. Takes off the necklace. He starts to shrink. His hair starts to turn red. His ears get, get pointy. And he starts talking all Irish. And he also he can start doing step dancing now, um, and all sorts of other things. That are just like, okay, you know, the years of work. No, 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 it's just a magic necklace power. It's weird. It's, it's so. Also, a leprechaun made potato chips, like the first one invented them. Look, if you if there's any stereotype about Ireland, the Irish leprechauns, this movie does it all. Every single thing you can think of. It's um, it's honestly insane. Also, I don't know. You don't want. I know you don't. Ugh, I know you. You do not watch Psych. But Lassiter from Psych is in this as the villain, and like that's a trip. Because <laughs> uh, I've only seen him play like the straight cop, uh huh. Pretty much, and it was different for sure. Okay, I think for a second, I'm gonna take away any semblance of vague offensiveness. Is this movie fun? Probably. Is it insane? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. There's a moment when a leprechaun punches an old man in the face, and you don't see the leprechaun actually making contact. It's amazing. Let's talk about the plot, Josh. What happens in the, like, the middle of the movie now? We've gotten past the way now. He's fine. This kid finds out he's a leprechaun. His necklace was lost at like, some like a villain lassie stole his necklace, and they don't know who they don't know who stole it. But he went to like this Irish jig thing. It looked, like, it looked, like, it looked like it was a St. Patrick's Day festival, but not St. Patrick's Day. And so he's like, oh, my necklace is gone. So the necklace made him look like a human and be lucky. And now he's no longer lucky, and he's starting to shrink down to a leprechaun boy. So what happens after that? He goes to school and becomes the most unlucky man in the world. First off, his mom, when she turns into a leprechaun, gives him, like, a bucket of, what was it, fish? What what the fuck was it? Cabbage? Uh, it was numerous. It was an actual, like, Irish dish. Also, this movie presents that as, like, ugh, gross Irish food. When instead you could have like packed it in a lunchbox. No, she gives it, it to him in a in a mini bucket. A, yeah, in a mini bucket, <laughs> and he takes it. He takes it to school. It's like yeah, it's gonna spill on you later in your locker because it's a bucket. He he loses his homework. He can't play basketball anymore because he sucks. Uh, women now hate him. Yeah, the the women scold him. <laughs> to be fair, it might be because you know he's carrying a bucket of like fish guts that might have something to do with it. He played a good basketball game night previous night or whatever. And then he didn't did it terribly. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next day, all the girls are like, he's like, he starts talking to them and they ignore him. And they just look past him like, oh, hey, Troy, you did great or whatever. I'm like, OK, because he played one game poorly. It's, you all hate him. It's so funny how like literally everyone in that school despises him now. And I'm like, I remember being in middle school and I know for a goddamn fact that like maybe 10 people would have given a shit. <laughs> Well, he has the luck of a god. Ah, my mistake, sir. 
and also this is a fun fact about me i am partially colorblind i cannot see certain shades oh of yeah red. i can't see certain shades of red and green so his hair did not look red to me <laughs> when, when he said his hair was red i was just like it's red <laughs> it was like superman cape red i can see that those shades of yeah those shades i can see but something like his hair no it did not look right to I me. Actually think, I was actually going to bring up later how they did a really good like, morph effect in the movie with his hair changing colors. I could tell that his hair was changing colors. I could tell that. He just didn't look red to me. We also get another red-haired person, which is Lassie himself, Timothy Munson, later in the movie, becoming a teen wolf leprechaun. <laughs> um, he actually, like, they do the exact scene like, from How I Met Rather of, there's a teen wolf on the court, ref. Do you not see that? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Which we'll get into in a minute, because that also is wild. There's a basketball game near the end of the movie, but it goes insane. They think his grandfather stole his lucky coin because apparently he and his mom like had some kind of falling out because she didn't marry An a leprechaun. An interracial marriage. Yeah, she didn't marry a leprechaun, which is apparently frowned upon in the Irish community. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so they go to his grandfather's potato chip factory. Apparently, he invented the potato chip because, you know, Irish potatoes, you know He's how they do. Years old. Uh, yeah, he is old, old, and <laughs> and there's this girl that just kind of follows the main kid around. I they don't really make her love interest. I don't know why she's here because she's constantly just asking him, "What are you gonna do for your heritage day?" That's most of her dialogue throughout a lot of this movie, and I don't know. But she follows him there, and Grandfather is just like, "No, no, no! I didn't take it. I just don't like your mom." You know what's crazy? This leprechaun boy, uh, Grandfather Leprechaun, was alive during slavery. He did nothing to stop it. He had the power of gods and did nothing. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about with the racism. <laughs> also, the whole thing. Yeah, and he told the little girl, you know, we had a bat. <laughs> it's just like, again, to the non-white girl, we had saying we had it bad, man. It's just like, uh, I think history can dictate otherwise. <laughs> I do think that she had the best performance of the movie, I think. Yeah, she was. Everyone was actually trying in this. Was, and, everyone was fine. Yeah, but I think because she was the most normal, it helped. <laughs> yeah, she didn't have to. Do, she had to have to say the most bat shane and bats and oh my bat shane bat shane bat shit insane things. <laughs> so yeah, let's bring up the, bring up the grandfather's for a minute in the factory where the potato, potato chip, I, uh, the Emerald Isle potato chips. Get it? Cause Ireland. Haha. -ha. Um, I get it. And, He's German. You th you're so smart. Thank you. Kyle, a main leprechaun boy, goes there trying to find the necklace rubber, and he runs into a, a tour group there. So he tries to sneak into the tour group. Doing a complete Amazing Spider-Man 1 scene, actually. Including asking questions, trying to get his, trying to figure things out. And he bumps into his maybe love interest friend person? I don't know, that's a weird... That seems like he was trying to do, do both of not and also being something there. I don't know. And that friend the is the, the girl who's like, hey, here's day. Oh yeah, or whatever. And... <laughs> Uh, why is she there? What is his tour group? It was a school bus. Why was he not there? What was that was never addressed? I, Very bizarre. You're telling me your your middle school didn't take you to random trips to potato chip factories? Can't say it did. Uh, also, did, you, did you clearly weren't living in America? <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm in the minority on that. I'm so sorry. Um, and then, not only that, there's a security guy watching the cameras as those two are just stepped aside talking for one second. He sees two kids, presumably on a tour group, who's right next to them. He hits a red button saying intruders. And then the whole thing goes intruder alert, intruder alert. And it's like, they are, the tourist the tour group is three feet from them of the same age. Why, <laughs> why do you assume there are intruders for, literally there is one, but why would you assume that? I mean, to be fair, he was the only white kid that entire day wearing a bucket hat. So I could understand him being like, oh, hey, it's that same kid. Regardless. It was dumb. <laughs> I'm gonna say my favorite quote of the movie now, Josh. Ready for it? I wonder if I have. In, Amer it. in America, we don't believe in kings. We believe in baseball. I was not. All right, then. That's fascinating. It's a quote in this movie. Do you remember this? No. Oh. <laughs> yep. But he tells that, that Kyle tells it to Timothy O'Munson. Fascinating. While doing the first of their sports. Um, so I have two I have two quotes here that I love. There's that feeling again, the feeling they were hiding something from me. And I wrote, No shit, Sherlock. That'd be like if they killed someone with a chainsaw, hid the body, but we're still covered in blood and holding said chainsaw. They're not exactly the best at keeping a secret. I also got our main leprechaun boy, Kyle, he applauds when he says things in an Irish accent. 
He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, what? You can you can talk how you want to talk. It's literally okay, especially if your powers are making you do it. Or whatever. <laughs> what? A, okay. So we have our villain. Let's get let's get to the end of the movie here. We have our villain. I guess also I didn't use you all enough. If you're new to the pod, if you're not new to the podcast, then you're aware we do spoilers for these. This is just spoilery always because it's 20 years ago. Josh, he in this movie. They find the necklace that keeps him human. And it gives his luck to his family. Um, they find it. Timothy Munson's character, the villain, he has it. And they break into his thing. They find out he likes doing bets. And so, like, okay, we'll make a wager. You give me back my grandfather, who he also stole by the beard. That's a weird thing. Apparently, spiraling... apparently when someone just grabs you by the beard, they have stolen you. Also, he got t- teleported through a magical coin tornado. Also weird. Um, <laughs> you remember that, right? I died when i saw that <laughs> uh it was never explained either um most things in this movie are not really explained that's just how it goes so he makes a deal with timmy the Munson to be like hey you give me back my grandfather uh who could not be your slave forever also slavery is brought up, brought up in this movie a lot just saying but only for the irish because it didn't happen to anywhere else in the world of course not again as they say this to the non-white lady in the group so they, the deal is, you give me my grandfather, and you give me and, I, and you give me my coin, my medallion, and my necklace wherever back. And if you win, I'll be your slave. It's a choice. It certainly is a choice. And they make a deal based on sports. They never said what sport. I don't know. He didn't say basketball. Yeah, like I thought that's, that's immediately. What, I thought that's what it was immediately going to head into. No, once he says sports, they transport to Ireland and are playing old Irish sports. <laughs> In some weird pocket dimension. Yes. Also. <laughs> it's never explained. Um, and the sports just change. Also, his two friends are around him still. Yeah, I love that it just they just transport his friends too for like no reason. They transport one of his only his best friend, and the games are always like two versus like ten or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like and that's when the first thing is like hurling or something, and he's like, Kings did this back in our time, whatever. And it's like, oh yeah, I don't believe in kings. We believe in baseball. And he hits it out of the way like a bat. Okay, that makes more um, sense because I was wondering where and, the hell that would come into play. Uh, it's weird. He then they tie. And he's like, well, if, he's like, I only said if you win, this will happen. Ho ho ho. It's like, okay, one more thing then. Basketball. That's not how bets work. <laughs> Apparently, they bet, these bets are magic as well. We'll get to in the very end of the movie because he, you know, and this time it's if I win this basketball game, you free blah blah blah. blah, blah. Or, and if you win, no, if I win, you go back to the shores of Erie. And if I win, what was, I guess the same deal before. I'm your slave and you can keep grandfather and whatever. Or, I don't know. At the end of the day, he wins in basketball with his friend. But the basketball game is also their state championship. Yeah. Maybe. We don't really know. They just say it's the finals. Well, it. Is it the same game that their whole school is there for, with these random adult men against them? Yeah, but the everyone else doesn't see adult men; they just see children because they had the power of magic to disguise themselves. I guess. Is that what happened? I. It's um, this is a weird last game. It's there's a Teen Wolf on the court. <laughs> he turns into just a leprechaun man with like fangs and like red hair. I'm just like, I can't tell if this is supposed to be another stereotype or you just needed him to look evil. It looks like a werewolf, but Ginger is like, I will be the king of all leprechauns. Apparently that's his end goal. That's what he wants to do. And when he loses, he's like, ah, you're sending me back to my home in Ireland. No, I said the shore, the shores of Erie, like Michigan. No, Ohio. What? I don't know. Yeah, Ohio. And then he instantly evaporates down to a small leprechaun size and gets teleported to space and then shouts, Ohio! <laughs> um, and I'm like, I, I thought it was a normal bet. Like, he was like saying, okay, I'll go then. I'll follow my end of the bargain. Because before, the medallion didn't just instantly teleport. It was just, okay. Weird movie. And it ends with Heritage Day. Josh, what happens at Heritage Day? <laughs> So, uh, Irish boy does an Irish jig and then talks about, you know, his love for his heritage. Then other girl that's been pestering him the whole movie about his heritage comes up and then 
<laughs> the Why icing she join him. I don't know, but this is that's not even the best part. The best part is they start singing "This land is your land, this land is my land." That literally the whole song, and I shit you not, everyone in the audience starts singing, and some people even start standing in unison. It is. So everyone starts standing eventually. It's so goddamn insane and hilarious. I died crying. It was He's amazing. Like, I'm Irish, but more importantly, we're American. Like, what is how is that better? Um <laughs> also, what? Why does your why does your dad think to just stand up during this? What was his thought? Because he started it. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna start Look, singing too during my my son's song. Look, you that's a very dad thing to do. Only thing I noticed is that one of the kids in the audience clearly didn't know the words. I noticed like one of the extras and was like mouthing like, okay, I'm going to try and figure it out as I go. And I loved that. That's how all kids are trying to sing a new song. And that's how it ends. (laughs) Amazing. It ends with that. Any thoughts on this movie, Josh? What what a picture that was. Um, I have written down one of my favorite lines is, you're not a leprechaun, Dad? No, I'm from Cleveland. I don't know why. That (sighs) that tickled my funny bone. They knew we were addressed where his heritage is from. Still, he's from Cleveland. Where is his heritage? Uh, Cleveland. Um, <laughs> I just have written here. What the fuck is going on? Tornado gold man. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then he grabs my beard in the vision, and then he teleport away not far, literally right outside. Outside, Harvey. Oh. Uh, I mean, this is also somehow a sports movie. Why was this one also a sports movie? But it wasn't the main focus, and I think that's why it worked better. It's the same with Genius, because hockey was in it, but it was not the main focus of it. Okay, I don't know how to give yay or nay to this. Could you give yay or nay to all the uh, these? Like, it's mostly judging on how on should your kids watch this. And if you're Irish, I'd say no. <laughs> if you're Irish <laughs> and you want a uh, to understand how people that aren't Irish can view you, this is a terrible example of how people can view you i think it's an interesting piece i would honestly don't i wouldn't mind rewatching this would you show it to your kid in the future i don't know it's it's so insane that i kind of love it it's it's definitely up there for me um in terms of like my favorite ones just because of the insanity of it but again i don't know that necessarily makes it good but i'm gonna give it a yay anyways i'm gonna give this a nay Really? I think. I think. I Listen, I think I had fun. I, okay, I will say, I was the most engaged I've been in weeks watching one of these. Very true. So I guess that counts for something. But this feels achy, like an underlying ickiness to it that I do not get behind. I question so many things. Like, why is Henry Gibson in this? Why is anyone in Why is Timothy Munson in this? Why did he choose to do this movie? I, I, nay yeah it's icky but also oh my god i would have loved to be an extra in this sure let's go with the end turning it around for yeah. the gold tornado for the gold tornado and for the teen wolf on the court yeah josh moving on what yeah you're nay yeah we both of us sure why not next we have news josh echo came out how much did you watch I've seen the first episode, and I enjoyed it. I will say, pet peeve of mine with these Marvel R-rated shows, they're only R-rated in the sense of the violence. It's just like, you have the rating, do more with it. Say the F word. It's okay. You're allowed. You're saying you want to have sex on screen again? Jessica Jones style is what you're asking for? Yes, these things are not horny enough. They need to be hornier. (laughs) And you can quote me on that. (laughs) I think we will. Uh, next, on that note, the, the <laughs> MCU Netflix shows are officially canonized on the Disney Plus Marvel timeline. Took them long enough. Yeah, because that was clear. They also, when they reused Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio, it became even clearer. When they used the same costume for Vincent, pretty much, for for uh, Daredevil, became even clearer. Like, that also means that the sex for Jessica Jones is also canon. Finally, some wanted. horny people in, the, in these places, thank God. We had, we had the eternal scene. That's, I mean, I guess. I guess. Two robots having sex on a rock, whatever. Yeah, they're robots, let's be real. Yeah, I, I, yay. I'm glad that both, they've been canonized more officially, as well as I'm glad that Echo is out, and apparently looks pretty cool. I haven't watched it yet, I'll watch it this next week. And I'll probably talk about it next episode. That one take fight scene, very cool, very well done. I'm very happy with it. We might wait till after a year review to watch it, cause like, to talk about more of the new stuff happening. 
But we'll see. Next on our list, Josh Willem Dafoe finally got his star in the Walk of Fame. Good for Yay that. Or nay. Good for that crazy goblin man. I was also going to call him a goblin man. <laughs> We do not mean this in any kind of offensive way. He was the Green Goblin. What do you mean, man? And yeah, I think he's deserving of it. I hate that, you, that they pay for it themselves. I that reason. Really? They, yeah, it's like fully like self funded. Huh. There's often like it's often like fundraisers for like, hey, help me get this. But there's no like committee or anything like choosing who's next. Forever. It's just like, can I have one? Pay for it. Huh. Interesting. Which dilutes the idea of it a little bit. But also, I I live in Los Angeles. It's not a glamorous place, the Walk of Fame. It really, it's just like people have shit on it, spit on it, pee on it. Like it's just like it's all, it's whatever. It looks a cool thing to get pictures of. You can tell who's a tourist based on who's looking down mm-hmm. uh, versus who's walking forward. Because most people who are touring just like look down, like trying to find, ooh, whose name is that? So it's a cool idea. I'm really proud of him for getting it. He kissed the well, his Walk of Fame star, which is the first and last time he'll ever do that. <laughs> it will be gross. Ready Player One. You've read it and watched it. So have I. What do you think about it? Many mixed feelings on both things. Same. Yes. How do you feel about the fact that WB has partnered with an AI company, Futureverse, to make Ready Player One a real thing in the metaverse? It truly is amazing how all these CEOs can look at these things that say, hey, this thing that shouldn't happen, don't do it. And they and their lesson learned is, I should do that thing. Like, Utterly fascinating, to say the least. Okay, but also, it would be cool. <laughs> no, you're feeding into it. Stop it! <laughs> uh, okay. No, like, I think that AI part is terrible, but I think the idea of, like, a, a more like, fun hub, like, on a game to pop up on, because a lot of the games I have, like, my quests and stuff, aren't quite the level I want them to be yet. I'm thinking of something where you can just pick more, like, a, not the full degree of the of the Oasis, but, like, you know, a speck of it would be fun. The, the problem with, like, getting VR to the levels of the Oasis is that just the technology that you would need to be able to power it is just, like, so far away from being able to happen. And even games that are really good in VR, like the Resident Evil 4 remake in VR, it's really good in VR, but it's still limited in what you're capable of doing. So yeah. something like Ready Player One even remotely happening is many decades away. I do think the best thing about like the the quest and stuff, the best thing about the games on them, the, the best games on the quest are the ones that are overly stylized and less realistic looking. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Dungeons of Eternity, I've been a while recently. It it looks very cartoonish and it makes it look more fun. Gorn, it's bloody and violent, but also it looks they're like chibi characters. What the hell? The 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 game where time moves slowly when you Super move hot. whatever. Super hot. That amazing game is the most immersive game I think I've played because it's so stylized. You're really transported into that world. And the more things you do, like the Oasis, like we're adding, you know, Darth Vader and, you know, Bugs Bunny or whatever, you're probably going to go with, like, trying to make it the style of those characters. And it's going to lose me more because it doesn't blend as well. So, uh, yeah, that's also part of the problem. Uh, but, yeah, ready to put a one real life thing happening? Yay or nay? Uh, big nay. Not a fan. Yeah, nay. But it would be fun. No, stop it. You know you watched an episode of Echo? Uh, you're, yeah, I did. Apparently, this is a rumor right now that Thanos... Uh, uh, rumors, weird word to say over here. As it's being reported that Thanos... Uh, nope. Kingpin will be the Thanos <laughs> of the Street Level MCU stuff. Uh, so, the ki- so he'll be, he'll be the, the Kingpin. kingpin. <laughs> right. It's, like, it's, ra- it's more like saying Thanos is the Kingpin of space. That makes more sense. Yeah. This so, is accurate. Cool. So he'll do what he's always done. I mean, cool. I'll take it. I got no problems with that. I just want to see Spider-Man Four versus Kingpin. That's all I want. Like he's like, he's. I'd say arguably even more of a Spider-Man villain than a Daredevil villain. But like, we don't get that. I just, I yeah. I just hope Spider-Man Four is just a Spider-Man movie. If they, if you want to throw in it like a cameo from Daredevil, fine. But just let it be Spider-Man only. No, please. but like, you're cool with the villain being Kingpin, sure, right? Oh yeah, sure. I got no problems with that. Yay. If, sure, I guess this is, I guess it's barely news, but yay. Yeah, he'll be a street-level Thanos. Yeah, sure. Josh, we have more AI news. Oh, my favorite. I love it. And the news that you already know about this one, SAG After has signed a deal with Replica to allow actors to create and license digital AI replica of their voice for video games and other media. Licensed voices can then be used in various projects from pre-production to final release. What the fuck? 
I'm going with this is both complete incompetence as to understanding exactly the dangers of it, and also just they're in the pockets of these companies. Like, that's got to be the only explanation, because there's no way that you make this decision without being fucking moronic and also just having a lot of money being thrown at you. The only way I'm okay with this at all is if it's literally just for pre-production, just to get, like do testing for characters. That's it. That's right. literally it. AI can be a good tool. This is not an example of it being a good tool. This exactly. It's terrible. I was also out picketing for months. It's just, it's, it's truly amazing that SAG after, you know, fought for months and months to fight against this stuff. Then it's just like, we're going to like do the exact thing that we were fighting against. Cause you know, that makes logical sense. What was I picketing for Josh? What was I, what was I helping out with for at this point? Uh, to look pretty with a fence post. I looked damn good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sir, it's not about me. I'm just saying that in general. What was the picketing for? What was the striking for? This is happening. There's we're not even getting resi- people, SAG actors aren't even going to be getting residuals from streaming. They'll be getting weird bonuses for a certain amount. It's not a good deal, and this just keeps building on that bad deal. I hate it. Nay. Big, big nay. Speaking of things we're going to say nay to. Oh, great. <laughs> Stranger Things news. Oh. First off, they already have started shooting th- they're working on it now um but eduardo franco who played argyle said he never got a call to return for season five which is strange because he's in hawkins at the end of season four well i see him because like, he was i what i would i don't think the character makes sense to be in season five actually i i think that him not being called to say hey we're not using your character is fucking shitty um because i think a little he still lives in, lives in california with like family and has people in his lives yeah so like it'd be weird for him to just because also he took a road trip it was like okay i have to head back now i'm still on shift or whatever like it feels it wouldn't make sense for him to just abandon everything to them but he could pop up for an episode they could call him like they do for sat like for what's her face what's you know the girlfriend of uh was nancy it? no the main character who's curly haired <laughs> mike <laughs> no 11 dustin dustin <laughs> His girlfriend is named something. Uh, uh, Darla? No. I thought this was her name. No. What's her name? It's like Sally or something. What is it? Susie. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know why I was thinking Darla. Darla. That's like that's from Shazam. Uh, Susie Bingham is. I think they call her all the time. They have her make cameos and stuff, and her whole family, the whole Mormon crew. They can't do this for Eduardo. That's stupid. But also never getting a call at this point may not be a no. It might be like, hey, we're writing your episode now. Are you interested in coming back? I don't know. I think it's a nay for me right now. Uh, it feels shitty, especially the, the fact that they're keeping two open Zionists on their cast uh, with Brett Gelman and Noah Schnapp, Murray and Will. Yeah, that's pretty, it's awful. pretty goddamn insane. <laughs> so nay on this news? Yeah, I'm going to go with a nay on that one. Hey, Josh. I don't know. What? Hey, hey Josh. I don't like this. I have Marvel news. Is it going to make me cry? I can't. I don't know. I, I don't um, control your tears. Now I'm concerned. Steven Yoon. Hey, he's a person. As you're aware, though. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm glad you know that part. Uh, as you're aware, he has officially dropped out of playing Sentry in Thunderbolts. And it was officially confirmed he was playing it like a week or two before this. His reason he put down was due to scheduling conflicts. Uh, he is leaving to do Lee Isaac Chung's next movie, called, uh, describing it as a small love story written by Eric Roth and produced by Bong Joon-ho. That's a good move for your career. I will say that he said it, this is because of the SAG strikes pushing everything back. And, and it's probably, probably true. He also uh, has said, this is reported from Variety now, he still wants to do a Marvel movie. He's like still really interested. He just this one with schedule didn't work out here. Uh, he said it took it took a lot of drafts on email to make sure that I conveyed sincerity of how sorry I was to back out. Makes sense. Which is yeah, because like, I I'm sure he's a huge fan. I mean, he was also in a huge comic book show for years, The Walking Dead, mm. and he's in one now in Invincible. That's true. Like, he loves his characters, so I can fully see him wanting to come back. Maybe as a different character, maybe whatever. But still, it's a sad news that he's out. I'll give it an A because it's a sad casting change, but like good for his career. Yeah. You know, if I was in his shoes and I had, you know, opportunity for a Marvel movie or work again with a director that completely changed my career and got me an Oscar nomination, I'd probably go with the latter. Speaking of Bong Joon Ho, I didn't put the news yet, but his new movie is delayed indefinitely now. Mickey 17. <laughs> Are you sad about that? 
I don't even know what the goddamn movie is about, but I'm sad. So nay. Nay. Nail that. Okay, cool. Same. Nolan. He's a British man. Uh, no, he's actually Australian and faking it being British. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Nolan says, <laughs> he said for it recently, this is a whole now three-part thing at this point. His Peloton instructor slammed one of his movies during class. He was talking to Variety saying, I'm dying. And the instructor started talking about one of my films and said, did anyone see this? That's a couple of hours of my life. I'll never get back again. And then that clip actually has service now of her saying all this stuff. And it's it was really, Tenet. It's really funny. And then she responded to it saying, y'all, uh, I liked Oppenheimer. saw it twice or whatever. <laughs> Which is the funniest response. Not like, hey, I watched it again and I changed my mind. Or, no, I, I didn't like that one, but I liked Oppenheimer. <laughs> so funny. I just can't. Okay, imagine you're sitting, sweating your ass off, doing the hard work, and then someone says in front of you, "You all see that short film, Just Breathe?" Ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who don't know, that was Josh's senior film. Go listen to episode one of our podcast to find out more. I just can't. Um, you don't get to see who your students are that day. No name list. I don't know how Peloton works at all with that kind of stuff. Me either. It's hilarious. And I think that they're both being good sports about it, actually. Yeah. Um, and I give this a yay. This is all funny. I'm I'll, all for it. I'll give it a yay. It's pretty funny. Speaking of directors, Josh, the Sati brothers. They are no longer brothers. Sat, they got divorced. <laughs> they have split. Because everything is, every new is like article said, Sati brothers have split. Like, you mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean? It's... You mean that they're no longer siblings? <laughs> It, it's pretty disappointing that they're not going to work together anymore because, I, I mean, Uncut Gems and Good Time are fantastic movies. They work so well together as directors. But Benny's career. His career as an actor has really taken off. So, like, I get it. I understand it. But I kind of wish they were, because I don't know if it's going to happen anymore, but they were, you know, playing their next movie. It was supposed to be another one with Adam Sandler, and it was another sports kind of themed one. I think it had him, Megan Thee Stallion, someone else. And, like, it sounded really fascinating, but obviously now I have no idea if it's going to happen or not. But he said, um, and I quote from Variety, it's a natural progression of what we need to eat. Nope, I'm already fucking up a quote. It's a natural progression of what we each want to explore. I will direct on my own, and I will explore things that I want to explore. I want that freedom right now in my life. Yes, good, sure, makes sense, just sad. I am curious just to see how both their careers will go now, actually. I am curious to see when they both direct stuff, who, like, clearly was the one that had the most talent directing. Because <laughs> it's always interesting when, like, directing duos split up, and, like, you can clearly tell, like, who out of both of them is the better one for directing. I'm mostly just excited to see their style split. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't really care about better or worse, more just, like, what do you have to say as a director versus, like, together? Yeah, I mean, like, um, with Benny Safdie's new show he made with Nathan Fielder, The Curse, like, it's pretty good. It is, oh, I've only seen one episode, and it is, like, one of the hardest things I've ever had to watch just because it's the most cringe thing ever. And I mean this in a good way. It's Benny Safdie, Nathan Fielder, uh, Emma not Stone. not the idol. Got it. No, that's a very different thing. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Got it. Understood. I see what this is now. Yep, I'm aware of this. Uh, so, yay or nay on them splitting us brothers? <laughs> I'm going to give him a, a nay on that one. You should never divorce your brother. Look, their parents must be so upset. Nay. <laughs> Letterboxd is making changes this year, apparently, and I'm pissed off and Josh is not. So, they plan to bring logging of TV shows to their platform later this year. I hate this. There are already other apps for this, and I can't stand those apps anyway. There's no good way to log TV. There just isn't. Do you log it by episode? But, uh, by season. It doesn't work out. As long as it's just a separate section on the app, that's all I ask. That's all I want. I want my movies to be divided. Tab. Yes, I want my movies to be divided into one thing, and I want my shows to be divided into another thing. I already hate that there's there's some shows on, on Letterboxd. Like having some of the Marvel stuff on there is dumb. Can you log it like as a certain day? Do you what do you mean? Do you mean you watched that's when you started? That's when you finished it? it doesn't make sense. I can't get behind it. So. With my very like when my brain thinks I don't like the idea of logging TV shows. There's one app I saw that was really good at it, where you it, you could log. It wasn't like logging like dates, but it was like you could put like watched for every single episode of a season series. Get every episode does out, and it put percentage of show watched. And that was really cool. That's all you need. Um, at, I forgot what it was at. I think it was like serialized or something. Maybe it's like Showtime. No, no Showtunes. I don't know what it was. I could find it later and put it in the description or something. But that app was good. 
We don't need another one. Letterboxd, I love you. Don't change. I thought someone said the only critique I could see is for this uh, is for people who think TV is worse than film. Like, they look down on it. No, I don't. I love TV. TV's great. Yeah, it's great. I think it doesn't belong on this app. That's a, that's a different function. And that's not, like, an elitist thing to say. I love shows. That was one of the best things I watched the entire year were TV shows. You know, fucking The Last of Us. Incredible. So I don't look down on it. No. Also, I just finished Ted Lasso this week. Josh has not finished it yet, but amazing. Good, good show. Correct. Once you finish it, I can talk about the ending, but I can't talk about it on here yet. So yeah, your nay on Letterbox adding TV. Actually, I'll make it twofold. If they make it not a separate tab. If they make it not a separate tab, then nay. If they make it separate, then yay. I give a nay regardless, but I can get more behind it if it's going to play a separate section I can ignore. We have other things that have happened that are make me sad. Great. Love it. <laughs> you know remakes happen all the time now. Of course they um, do. And we're both already aware of the Harry Potter and Dragon remake happening. Here's what's weird to me. Gerard Butler is playing Stoic again. I mm-hmm. feel like he could have gone with someone better. That's the, the part of the news. We have two casting. We have Nick Frost as Gobber, which is great. Wonderful. Um, and Gerard Butler returning as Stoic the Vast. Sure. I think the voice would be good to hear the same voice again. But he's not very vast to me. You know? I mean, he's pretty He's pretty big in 300, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. I'm Actually, I'm thinking I'm ne- neutral on Gerard Butler. I think it's... I think they clearly went for him because, like, hey, he has a decent physique and also did the voice. Let's do him anyway. I don't think he looks at the character at all. I don't think he feels like the character at all. He just voice matches. And so I might I want someone different for that. But also, there's no hate to draw about that. I think he's a great actor. I don't think he fits that part specifically. But Nick Foster's Gobber is amazing. His, his, you know, the gay best friend. Which is not a rumor. He was supposed to be gay in the movies, but they, it was just could only be hinted at at the time. Nick Frost is great. I... I'm excited to see him with the very, very long mustache. Aren't you, sir? Yes. Supergirl. Are you aware of the character? She's a person. I'm kind of, she's kind of an alien. What do you mean, bud? Oh. Uh, we, according to Deadline, there are three frontrunners right now, potentially the mixed play Supergirl in the DCU, the new James Gunn cinematic universe. Uh, Millie Alcock, Amelia Jones, and Meg Donnelly, who I have seen one of them in something. I watched Coda, and that was good. Who do you think of those three fits best for car danvers i don't know uh i think i could see all of them being a good cara but well again we'll have to see people are mad that they're not using sasha kaya again like i get that but i think they're distancing from that universe as much as they can is a smart move it's a very smart move i think it's upsetting that she was probably wasting the movie but i also haven't seen the movie i don't really watch want to watch the flash movie she she was she was not given much for her character and it was disappointing was she fine in it she was fine in it, but again, she doesn't really have much to do in it, so I can't really say, like, it was... I can't say it was a good performance, but I can't say it was a bad performance, because her character is just so underwritten, just like everyone in that movie was. I'm fine with any of them right now. I've not seen all of them in a ton of stuff, but, like, open to it. Sure. Yay. Castings! Also, that means we might actually get Supergirl relatively soon with Superman. I love the idea of that. I know we're getting her a movie, but, like, I'd like to see them actually interact in time sooner rather than later. Josh... I call you Josh. Josh, you ready? Sure. Are you alive still? Eh, who knows. Moving on from one woman. <laughs> what? Moving on from the women of DC to the women of Marvel, specifically the women of Spunk. We got a new look today at Madame Web with costume design, better and clarity in theaters February 14th. Josh, you, know, you saw the image, right? Of the costumes? Yeah. Yeah, they're good. They all look amazing. And I've been saying the costumes look good since day one. No one's on my side. Well, uh, except for Madam Webbs. No, it looks good. I will fight you on that still. It looks like the character. It looks it's, accurate. It looks What do you mean it looks like the character? Madam Webb, her suit looks just like the character's suit. No, huh? No. What are you talking about? I've seen both Madam Webb, both old and young. That ain't what she looks like. Hold on. Yeah? What do you mean? Like the the red just sleek suit with the, the white spider design on it. And show show me Dakota Johnson's. You you think it looks bad? I'm not a fan of it. Josh, talk for time. So, you you know the thing of dreams, and you know how you have the feelings of you know going to the store and just saying hi to the priest. Yeah, this is one. This is oh, I sent the th- same thing. This ocean spray bottle. It looks good. What are you talking about? It looks like the character. 
Give her some goggles and your like. Give her some gray hair, I guess. But like, eh. Yeah, I have no problems with these costumes. Also, I think it's really funny we got the first look at the costume from an ocean spray bottle. I'm um, I'm still not a fan of it. I would have greatly preferred if it was her actual like young person costume. It's not as funny. I think it's funny to give her the old woman suit and with just normal looking person. I don't know, man. I give you eight of these costumes costumes overall. The movie as a whole, I'm so curious. But these costumes are fun to me. Yay or nay on the 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 first look three pictures, whatever. Yay, sure. Okay. Let's talk about your favorite thing of all time. I have a favorite the last thing. Of us. That yeah, that's the last up there. Of us. These we got the, we got the casting announcements like Isabella Merced as Dina for one thing. Cool. Um are you happy with the castings we got overall this past week or whatever? I am more than happy with these castings. I am so excited. One? Yeah, uh it's the cast Abby, Jesse, and Dina. Those were the only ones to cast, right? Yeah. So yeah, Isabel Merced as Dina, young Mazzino as Jesse, and then Caitlin Dever as Abby. Please help that girl give her protection. For the love of Christ, keep her remove off the, the internet. internet. Remove the internet from everything from her because she will get harassed. I know what happened because I have existed as Josh's friend for a while. He hasn't spoiled anything for me directly, but I've been around. <laughs> um, and so I've, I've through osmosis, I know what happens and to make people hate Abby. But I think it's I'm excited for this casting. Overall, they're both, they're all, all three of them are great actors, so yay. Award shows happened. We got Emmys for one thing. Well, not the entire Emmys. No, which is bizarre. <laughs> I get why they have to split it up just because there's so much, but it feels weird they don't define it better as to like what's in what. Do you like the Emmys we saw? I didn't really pay that much attention to it. I we just... got a Nick Offerman Emmy for Last of Us, though. I'm fine with that. Same as Storm Reid. Yeah, what to say that one? Beat me to it, sir. Emmys overall, I guess. Yay! I'm indifferent to the Emmys, and I shouldn't be. I, at least like the like this section of the Emmys, I don't pay that much attention to. But also, I haven't seen every show, so it's a lot harder for me to be invested in the Emmys. Right. There's so much TV. Emmys happened. I guess I'll give a yay because I'm just I don't watch enough TV. But Last of Us won eight, so yay for that. I'll take. It. I watched that show, and also the Golden Globes happened. You know, funny enough, I kind of dug at least, like, most of the winners this year. Okay, but, like, let's talk about why I said you're funny and enjoy Joe Coy at the beginning of this podcast. Because, Josh, you've made me laugh before. I have? Joe, Joe, I am mean, I know, crazy. Joe Coy did not. His monologue is insane. He is, in, it was a very sexist night overall. Surprise, Golden Globes. He talked down about Taylor Swift, Barbie movie. He called, he's thrown up about how Oppenheimer based on a 700 page book and it's a masterpiece of cinema. And then Barbie based on a doll of boobies. No one laughed. Yeah. It's not funny. I don't, I don't, I just don't get it. I don't get how this happened. What? He said, like, he also, in the middle of his speech, blamed the writers because he saw he was losing, he saw he was losing the crowd. It's like, sorry guys, it's not perfect. What are you doing? It's like, what a way to try to save face by blaming the people that literally like wrote it for you. Also, who were on strike for months. Also, he's like, I only had 10 days, y'all. That's a long time to come up with jokes. I can come up with way better jokes about all this stuff you're talking about. It's not good. Josh, your homework for next that week is to watch the monologue. What if I don't want to? I won't give you a hug when I see you in person next. <laughs> okay. So, I give the Golden Globes overall, though. The actual awards, I think a yay. I yeah, think they're I th overall pretty good. I think this year, compared to like previous years, like it's been, it was pretty good. So I'm gonna, I'll give the awards themselves a yay. I love how they were uh, in secret last year. That was last year. Was it two years ago? Does time move that fast. It was, two, it was two years ago. That's right. Yeah, when they were in secret and they only had like Schwarzenegger and like Jimmy Lee, Jimmy Lee Curtis. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Bizarre. Uh, this is weird. This is very weird. They they talked down to like people in the audience a lot. I didn't even know who Joe Coy was until, like, last year. No one year. did! I didn't know him. He existed until that movie, Easter Sunday, came out, like, last year. A, a movie called Easter Sunday that came out in August. And I didn't know th who this man was until then. Yeah, he's... It wasn't funny. But Josh, where do you go from the weirdly botched monologue to the weirdly botched franchise? Star Wars. Your favorite thing on Earth. Oh, boy. And so I told Josh the other day... Somehow he's our Star Wars guy, so he has to keep watching these. 
Even though I don't want to. Ahsoka has been renewed for season two. Have you watched any of Ahsoka? I don't care. So that's a no. Got it. Have you watched any of Ahsoka, honestly? No, I haven't because I know that I'll need to watch, like, Rebels and Clone Wars to be able to understand and appreciate what's happening. I could probably watch it without either, but I'm not going to appreciate it or understand a lot of it the way I would if, if I, you know, have seen the other two. I give this a yay to piss Josh off and his indifference. And make our Star Wars fans happy. Okay, yay, because people did like it who watched it. I'll say that. I'm glad y'all are getting more of what you want. If you liked it, good for you. I just haven't seen it yet because I don't have the time to watch 50,000 other things. Star Wars is homework now, and we'll get into this later. This is coming from two fans of The Last Jedi. So, so. if you think that <laughs> get, makes us more credible or less credible, that's up to you. Also, if you hate us, there's timestamps down below. You can skip ahead to find out where, how to email us. And if you email us with death threats, that's not exactly productive. I will still read them out of the podcast because it's funny. Next up, we... The Mandalorian, that's hot. We got more Mandalorian stuff, Josh, your favorite franchise of all time. The Mandalorian and Grogu movies in the works. Jon Favreau set to direct with a theatrical release planned. And on top of that, The Mandalorian Season 4 was, was all written, but Lucasfilm reevaluated their plans during the strikes and made the Mandalorian and Grogu movie their priority. Dave Filoni is helping write the script to this movie, and Season 4 scripts are both written but unclear if it will ever happen. Josh, thoughts on Mandalorian and Grogu the movie? What a title, first off. I I truly need to understand the thought process of greenlighting this movie first off. Just because that you literally need to watch, if this does come out after season four, four seasons of a television show you will have to watch in order to understand it because it's supposed to be the, f the finale of that season, first off. Second off... What's the point of greenlighting this movie if every episode of the show has a movie quality budget to it, where it's indiscernible from from movies of the Star Wars series? So, like, what is the point of it aside from seeing it in theaters? And also, I don't, I don't want this at all. I mean, also, are you aware, are you aware of the rumor that like Ray will be training Grogu? If that fucking happens, I'm <laughs> I'm going off a bridge. My male fingers out just with a sign on me that says fuck y'all bitches i hate star wars now that's our show that's our show y'all we're done now apparently and i need to be specific here not because ray is training grogu i love ray i have no problems with ray i'm talking about tying in all that shit to ray's story that's what i don't want but given lucasfilm's track record that'll probably happen so that's josh's star wars rant I give this a nay because I don't like the idea of making a movie based off of a show like this. Be if it's gonna be a theatrical release movie, don't make it like set as the finale of the show. It's like a Sopranos movie. Weird thing to do. It's weird, but like at least I can see the logic behind that more because it's a prequel, and you know they had other things they could do in the movie that they couldn't have done with the show per se. Or it's like, you know, Serenity being the finale to Firefly and actually having, you know, budget for effects and stuff like that and looking, like, really cool and good. But this, like, it's going to look as good as the show is, so, like, what's the point? Yeah, at least, at least like, the psych movies based on the show. Hey, Timothy Munson, look at the Irish. Those movies, like, are theat or not theatrical release. They were made, like, for streaming services and made for, like, to air on TV because it's the same vibe. It's just, like, you know, we, could we couldn't do more seasons, so here's a few more movies. That's fun. This doesn't fit that same vibe. Not the same idea. It's weird. Also, I haven't seen a single episode of Mandalorian or any Star Wars show ever, pretty much. So that's and that's also the other crazy thing. Most general audiences have only seen like some of the first season. Most people I know have not kept up with it past the first season. So like, if they go into this without having seen anything else, they are going to be so confused. Like, I, I who is this going to target except for the diehard fans? I truly also, am curious. It has the same problem that a lot of MCU people have with, like, movies now, is that it requires you to subscribe to a streaming service to watch a movie, to, like, to keep up with the movie in theaters, which is dumb. You shouldn't have to have Disney Plus so you can watch Star Wars in the theater. That's a weird thing. You shouldn't have to have Disney Plus to watch a Marvel movie in the theater. That's a weird thing. Movies shouldn't be homework. Just and, saying. And this is, Star Wars is now homework. And then you'll have the Mandoverse movie, which is supposed to combine all. Is like, that the different? 
Yes, it's a completely separate thing. Oh, and God. That one's going to combine all, like, the live-action shows that they've done, like Ahsoka, Boba Fett, Mandalorian. It's going to tie them all together and, like, do something. That one's still being in the work from Dave Filoni. Like, that one's going to be the most homework ever. And I'm just like, this is stupid. I hate this. On that note, yay or nay on this news. You know what? I'm I'm going to be going against the uh, going against character here. I'm going to say nay. Going, you're going against character? That's yes, so shocking I know. I've, I've never this. been against Star Wars in my life. To be fair, also, everyone who doesn't know, Josh loves the original trilogy of Star Wars. He loves Force Awakens and Last Jedi and enjoys parts of Episode 3. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff in Star Wars I like, but I would not consider myself, like, a fan, per se. I'm Anymore? Someone, I'm, well, even to begin with, I've always liked Star Wars, but I've never been, like, obsessed with it like other people have. I would say I'm more of a fan of, like, Marvel than I am Star Wars. Yeah, I think that Star Wars was a good theatrical saga overall eh. eh i liked the original trilogy and i liked force awakens and i like last jedi and i like parts of episode three if episode three was the only prequel i think i would be like that's good i'd say that's a fun prequel yeah okay that's the end of our news josh yay that's 40 minutes of news dear god okay are you ready for the the main topic today moving from one dead franchise to another oh boy <laughs> i'm well <laughs> I'm not ready for this. All right. The DCEU, the DC Extended Universe, which never even got a proper name technically. This is the history of the DCEU, including what happened as well as the list of canceled stuff. Are you ready for this? I am so excited just to remember the stuff that they greenlit. And because they've greenlit so much crap and canceled it over the years. I am s like, remember the Wonder Twins movie? That's on the list. Don't worry. Oh, this doesn't have the pre-DCEU stuff on this because there's stuff like the Green Lantern, which was supposed to be the start of the DCEU, then bombed terribly. So I didn't start it. They're like, okay, let's try again. We'll start, we'll start scratch again. They, they um, had better success with Man of Steel. We might talk eventually about the pre-DCEU DC film history because a lot of stuff has happened that was interesting. Like leading up to Man of Steel is a bizarre history for Superman. Like the time between Superman Returns to Superman Man of Steel, a lot of things were pitched and thrown out there. Uh, we almost got a game of the Toro making a Superman movie at one point. Like, it's been a lot of weird stuff happened, which also that would have been a really cool movie, I feel like. Let's talk about Man of Steel first. Uh, directed by Zack Snyder, uh, with screening by David S. Goyer, Chris Terrio. No, he didn't, no, just David S. Goyer and Nolan on that one, yeah. actually. Terrio uh, came on for BVS. Overall, do you like Man of Steel? I know your answer to this already. <laughs> It is such a mixed bag of a movie to me. I think as a standalone movie, I think it's fine at best. There's a lot that I like. There's a lot that I don't like. I do not hate it. But yeah, as the start of a universe, though, it was certainly an interesting choice. I hate you. I'm a, Look, I'm aware of this. <laughs> I've accepted it. Man of Steel it. is a top tier movie for me of all time. I love Man of Steel. Okay, so I could wait for hours. I'm not going to do that. I love it. I love, like, pretty much everything about it. I think that the end fight becomes too much like a video game battle for a bit. And I think that the tornado death is funny because <laughs> it could, I mean, I get the idea of it fully. I think I can, I see both sides of the argument. So it's whatever. Overall, loved it. I love the more alien approach to, like, Superman's ship and his suits, all that stuff. I thought it was really cool and clever. Someone I actually did some theater with, like, like local theater productions with and stuff. Uh, play young Superman. That's pretty fun. Uh, he was credited as Robert Timberline, I think. Um, so that's cool. Maybe it was Cooper. Maybe it was Cooper on there. I knew it was Cooper. His real name's Robert. He I don't know which one he was credited as, but he was young Superman. Pretty cool. Overall, this movie, yay! Please tell me you'll at least say yay for the mess it started. I will give it a yay for Hans Zimmer's amazing score. There you go. Oh my God, so good. That leads us into a movie we both think is good, which is a surprising. Somehow, we both like BVS. Well, it's... Dawn of Justice. It, that movie it took is, you a while. That movie is the weirdest of roller coasters for me. <laughs> the, I still have many complaints about it, but I think overall it is a lot better than I once thought it. But th again, many problems. <laughs> when you revisited, you are like, do I like this now? <laughs> uh, I... The, okay, I'm going to address it as the ultimate edition, mostly. The theatrical one does not exist, but that, well, I mean, it leads into a lot no, of problems. No, we, we have to discuss theatrical versions versus ultimate cuts a 
two movies in this list. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's a lot more of them than you think. Somehow there's at least two, and only two. Well, almost a third if you count the 2016 movie, besides BVS, which we'll get to soon. Batman Superman, Dawn of Justice. Okay, for all you haters out there, yes, we don't always have good taste. We understand this. <laughs> I understand all of the complaints. I don't have to agree. That's all. It's crazy how it comes down to this movie, I think. I really, really attached to this movie, um, and I really, like, stuck to it. And, like, I loved it walking out of the theater until this day. I still love it. I had a BVS poster above my bed in college. Josh can attest to that. He really did. Uh, I loved it. And I think Ben Affleck is probably my favorite Batman still. Not my favorite Batman movie. My favorite Batman movie is still The Batman, um, hey. followed by <laughs> Keaton. The only Batman that's allowed to murder to me is Tim Burton's Batman. No one else is allowed to murder. Ben Affleck murdering this to me, I think it's interesting. Because most of the movies to me, it feels like murdering is collateral damage, honestly. That's still bad! No, no, I understand. I fully get that. But I'm saying it's not like he's pointing a gun and shooting someone in the head. He literally well, did! Shut up. <laughs> what are you talking about? Are you saying you're the end of the fight? The warehouse? Yes! Pointed, no. a gu- pointed a giant I, gun at a man and was just like, I'm going to, but he didn't say I'm going to kill you, but he was thinking that. Shot his, you know, flamethrower, caused him to explode. Precisely. He hit him in the head. That's not, it. oh my. <laughs> okay, but. No, the, no, I, I agree with you, though. I don't think Batman should be killing in general. I understand. I, I, the only thing I hate about the warehouse fight, it's an awesome fight, but it completely goes against the lesson that Batman learned literally the scene prior of, hey, killing is bad, and I'm becoming the thing I shouldn't be. Literally, the following scene, he starts killing again with no remorse. Yes. And I, th- I like the idea of Jason, or I guess Dick Grayson, which is what Zack Snyder wanted for some reason, the death of the Robin being, like, this downfall of him. That's cool. Um, I don't like that Superman's the one who got him out of it. In the comics, it's Tim Drake. I, I like the Martha line. I, li- I have always liked the idea of that, of like the humanizing Superman through that way. I'm like, the, e. the, it's the execution, man. That's the problem with it. It, I, it needs, if it had a few more scenes of flashbacks with Bruce and his parents and that kind of stuff, give and, us, the, and the word Martha. Give us more with Bruce and his parents. Give us more with Clark and his mom. Build up the relationship better. And don't just, don't say Martha. Don't you got it? You had to have find something else, or better yet, well, no, that wouldn't have made sense. But if it was something like instead of Lois there, if it was his mom, like then that would make far more sense. But whatever, I don't know. I also I also like this Lex Luthor, not as Lex Luthor probably. It's not accurate. He's but I like that it wasn't real estate as the plot. It honestly, I liked it. The more I watch it, the more I really like <laughs> his. <laughs> You see, that's it's great. I love it. And I know we're having hate for this. I know a friend of the podcast, Nicole, Nicole Clayton, hates this movie. I don't blame uh, him. There's I don't blame there's, anyone. There's problems with it. I think it's like Ultimate Edition for me is like 9 out of 10. I love it. I, I understand that it has problems. I get it. And I agree with your points. I do. And I think it's the same problems that lead into some other movies in this list as well. I think also that the, the, the in-universe thing of some intern at LexCorp how to design logos for Flash, <laughs> Cyborg, Aquaman, etc. is hilarious. Oh, that kills me every time. Because also, oh. that scene could have been done better too. The the uh, That could have been Bruce's own files on people. Would have been a better execution. It's such a weird movie for them to have been like, oh, we got to fast track this universe because Marvel's really ahead of us. So let's just make five movies in one and see what happens. And like by the doing, th- by the third act, it does not work. <laughs> doing Death of Superman with Doomsday, while also having like Dark Knight Returns, ba- Death of Superman, BVS, Dark Knight Returns, prequel to Justice League. Like there's so many things that it's doing, that, and it, by the end, it doesn't work. <laughs> but we both somehow like it. It's moving very, on. It's very strange. David Ayer's theatrical cut. Of Suicide Squad. Is the extended cut any better? Hold on. I'm saying, because in theory, according to him, his own like his own air cut exists somewhere. Just like the Snyder cut existed somewhere. It, you know, oh I God. don't doubt there is that. But also... He, Who cares? That's... Uh, I feel bad for him. 
But at the same time, like, at this point, dude, you've got to move on. Like, his movie The Beekeeper came out this weekend. I have heard him talk more about his Suicide Squad movie than I have him talk about The Beekeeper. Like, that's a problem. He wrote the script in six weeks for Suicide Squad. And if you write movies, you know, that's a that's a very fast turnaround. That's fine if it's a first draft. Or at least get another, if you're writing in six weeks, get a few more writers on there. Not just you. And it's, and it's not like that he's a bad writer. Like, his movie Fury is really good. I really liked it. So, like, when he was announced for this movie, I was like, all right, that's cool. I stand by this is the worst DCEU film. I haven't oh, seen for sure. The Flash. This is this is barely a movie. That's the problem. This, this was reshot and re-edited to hell. And it's barely conceivable as to what this is supposed to be. I will say, 16-year-old me walking to the theater said, 7 out of 10. Had a lot of problems, but decent. <laughs> it was, I, I will never forget, that, like, every time I saw this movie, it kept getting worse and worse. It was so funny. I love watching a letterbox when I, knew, when I knew you in college. Your ratings go down. Very funny. Uh, I, want, I remember when I first saw my girlfriend's movie, too. I showed the extended cut to give it a better chance. It um, doesn't do anything. It doesn't help. It doesn't it, help. It's uh, literally just some deleted scenes are thrown in. I, I feel like we have to address the cast in this one. Uh, Joker, interesting <laughs> portrayal. I hate um, it with a passion. I love the look. Hold on, I... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not the grill, not the, not all, not the damage tattoo. I like half the tattoos work, half don't. And the actual like, bleached skin look, the slick black, the slicked back, bright green hair, the the way the purplish black is on the eyes the red actual lips, I think a lot of that works. I don't like the performance. The problem is it's not the Joker. It's just a crazy gangster. And there is... No! I will argue he's... Okay, never mind. I'm not going to argue this right now. There, there are I will Jokers, lose every audience member we have. There are Joker variations that can work in this kind of way, but the problem is, is that he's never written or directed to be the Joker. That's the problem. And uh, Jared Leto is something, to say the least. He's not good in this. He's, he's just a bad person. That too. Um, which my friend saw live by accident. I don't. I love the Joker. It's a like very character of all time. Like very comic book, comic book character. I I do think he improves later in the list. Jared Leto in his other appearance. And oh, the Snyder cut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But is it good still? Probably not. Um, some of the cast in this is pretty good, like Will Smith, Margot Robbie, and are we some kind of Suicide Squad? <laughs> and uh, Joel Kinnaman and Jai Courtney, like they're doing the best with what they're given, but the problem is, is they're not really given much at all. I like the Killer Croc actor. I don't. I, he's great in Lost too. Um, he, I don't think he he doesn't do anything in this movie. He has like two lines in this. It's like I'm beautiful, bitch, and I got that. That's all he says. And uh, it's so so many things. Oh, Viola Davis, great, perfect cast, great. But the, you can just every any time you watch this, you can clearly tell like that this was just completely messed up from beginning to end. And I am I do want to see what his original version was, just to see if there's an actual coherent story to this. Viola Davis is the casting so good it survived the soft reboot called the, the Suicide Squad, as well as uh, the new universe reboot. <laughs> yep, that's very true. Yeah, I this movie is a mess. Uh, I think if it had also I think if that first the second trailer hadn't happened, this would be a better movie. The the yeah. neon, the bright Bohemian Rhapsody, all that stuff changed everything. And they had trailer editors re edit the movie too. Yeah. It's... Which is a different it's a different art I love trailer editing. It's a different art form than film. Oh, editing. completely, one hundred percent. And the soundtrack is complete nonsense. It's just here's a famous song, here's a famous song, here's a famous song. All my song. friends are heathen say get slow. It's uh I don't I don't like it. Let's let's just rip the band off, go to the next one. Wait, I want to say one thing. Harley Harley is good casting still. I really, really, really get behind that. Good. Uh, and Enchantress's belly dancing is hilarious. Harley, good casting, god awful written character in this movie. I like the least showed like the relationship with Joker existing just as a thing. I Barely, wish they weren't as lovey. <laughs> I wish they weren't as lovey dovey together. Yeah, that was a weird choice. Uh, Wonder Woman's next with the uh, attempted actress Gal Gadot. <laughs> This is um, such this is such a conflicting one to talk about now as as for many yep. given reasons. 
former IDF soldier Gal Gadot. For for one thing, I will say this is still a good movie. A great movie. It's it, great. It's still good, and I think that Patty Jenkins does a really good job with this. I think, which is confusing because the next movie he, that she does with this, I franchise. think I fully believe it's just because she was going for a different style. But we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> Uh, but, this movie is great. Wonder Woman is great. I loved it. Nine out of ten. It's it's really good. I love the story. I love. There's so many things. Uh, Chris Pine's fantastic. Gal Gadot tries. <laughs> I don't think she's bad in this because I don't think that this part requires much. Yeah, or at least the way this in car- this movie specifically. Yeah, yeah. it's written. Yeah. Um. It it's written with a very much a naivety to the character in this. Uh, much like some of her uh, appearances like in every like DC reboot, she's like, I'm fresh and new, like the first Thor movie. Yeah. Although that movie, cr- that required a lot, I think a lot more, that spent more time on Asgard as well. So that didn't have, a, had him have to balance both parts. And I'm not saying this to insult Gal Gadot, I don't think. I don't know anymore, <laughs> I don't man. think, I, who knows? I don't, I'm tired of what's happening in the world it's... in the genocide of Palestine. Yeah. Um, but I will say that Gal performance in this is decent because the movie itself it it filters like her through a good path in this yeah her Um, her arc is really good and really interesting where did that sword go in her dress we're not gonna talk about it she's just holding it with like back muscles that's like digging in her what is happening going she going down the ass crack that's not what i'm i'm saying the back muscles josh i mean look whatever way it works Written by Alan Heinberg and starred by Zack Snyder, Alan Heinberg, and Jason Fuchs. Um, with a lot of people producing it. Patty Higgins did a well, good job. I love the No Man's Land scene. Uh, great, I think it's really scene. inspiring. I think the Aries thing gets a little lost in the plot at one point. Um, yeah. But like, I get it, why it's there, but it kind of yeah. ruins the message of the movie. I don't even know if I'd go, I'd go that far. I would just go that. I don't think that there's not a good way to end this movie. With everything, the, 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 two-thirds of the movie is great. And then you kind of get your law. You kind of get stuck in a plot you can't fulfill. It it's very interesting because it very much sets up the idea of just like that there are just evil people in this world. It's not brought upon by anything. And then Ares shows up. And he's like, "I'm the one that caused this entire thing." I'm just like, so you're just completely undermining well, your own message. No, cause he even said that they that he didn't do it. He said he just like added like a little note to notice. Like, well, no, that's that like, still undermines it though. I don't know. I think it's like men are. There's still complicated creatures and stuff and whatever. I do. I think it's really weird that after the, it does undermine it though when Arius dies and they all start hugging. Yeah, that's, that's that. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. It's it's got problems, but it's still pretty good. Yay on that movie! I'll give it a yay. Moving on to our our 2017 other movie of the year that you hate, uh, theatrical release of Justice League. I despise this movie. <laughs> okay, hold on. It's bad, but like, I like it. You're wrong. No, I, I'm well, well aware. I think it's a bad movie. I'm saying I don't think it's good. I will always be giddy seeing those superheroes on screen together, no matter what. I, I, a good child of me can never be unhappy seeing that. I think. No, that's a no for me. Too. <laughs> you, you're killing childhood like a seven-year-old Sean. You're stupid yes what the hell man no like i think that are interesting i okay this is also one of the few times i liked ezra miller in this um which is a i know we had ezra news for a while on the show that's true i know i liked every before this i think i think it's edited poorly i think it's acted weirdly um the... it's written chopped up the the whole justice league debacle of it all is confusing it's... and messy and Makes it a Frankenstein much better film. It is far e- it is far easier in this compared to Suicide Squad to see what was reshot because you can tell from like the wigs, the green screen and stuff, it's bad. That one Aquaman shot jumping in the water. <laughs> oh it's, god, that's that's the worst on the film. I also really hate in this, um, and this doesn't even have anything to do with the quality of the film necessarily. It's they really turn up the colors in this. To like, it's weird. It look. It makes it look bad because like when you're when you're filming something, you have a certain aesthetic in mind, and so that it plays into how you light scenes. It plays into how like the costumes look in terms of their colorings and things. And then when you mess with the that kind of stuff in post, like you can only go so far with it to make it look natural to how you filmed it. And 
Snyder, for better or worse, is someone that knows how he wants his things to be colored. So you watch the Snyder cut, and everything looks fine. I don't like that it's barely has color in it, but it still looks fine. And or then, you watch the black and white version, which has no color in it. That too. And then in <laughs> this, they... In this, they seem to keep re retroactively changing it to where it's just like, oh, people want color. Turn the color up. And it not only makes everything look worse, it makes the effects in green screen look terrible. Can I just say that the, the trailers for this also had, had the same Suicide Squad feeling of watching that first trailer of just Batman and the mountains and the snow. Like, like the gritty, that like really heavy feeling. And that second one's like uh, the Beatles, like the Junkie XL Beatles cover. Bizarre change. I um, love that song though. I do too. I love both versions of the song actually. I think that I think Junkie XLs is my favorite version of it. Over the Beatles. I look. Hmm. I have nothing against the Beatles. Nothing at all. No, I, I, I agree with you actually. It I has just, a fun rock sound. Yeah. Uh, okay. This movie is not good. No. I said bad. it before. I'll say it again. I have fun with it, and you. That's fine. You can't argue fun is bad, Josh. It's. It honestly is very interesting watching both this and the Snyder Cut back to back to see the difference. Did you do that? Not that well, I mean, separated by days. Okay. I feel like okay, well, let's go. <laughs> that's look, that's six hours of my day that I would need to set aside to do that. Um, I think it's stupid how the like they they didn't, didn't tell Joss how to light Clark's suit. Cause that suit designed for certain lighting conditions. The way, like, yeah. the way the sheen is. And so he looks really weird in it. Yeah. Um, that's not even counting the mustache they had to take out. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, I don't think the mustache is the worst thing in the world. I think it's bad and weird looking. I think if they didn't have, I think if the execs and Warner Brothers didn't force them to make this come out at the Thanksgiving release date they had set to and actually pushed it yeah, back. Yeah, they won the bonuses. Yeah, I think if they actually put this back, this could have been something. Maybe. Maybe. Obviously, I have no idea. But Joss Whedon is a love massive... Love to live in the world where BVS Ultimate Edition was the version released, and we kept going off of that world. I'm so curious. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that would affect things. But Justice League overall, bad. I mean, it's it's bad. Again, I know it's bad. The colors look terrible. The people act weird. They t they take out all of Cyborg's character. They make Aquaman just go like, "My man, woo!" That's his whole character. As we discussed last episode, Aquaman has no personality in the series, but it's weird. That leads us to Aquaman, actually. The next movie. This, oh, Which, that is it's the next movie. It, yeah. From December 21st, 2018. Um, directed by James Wan. Uh, written by David Leslie, Johnson McGoldrick, and Will Beale. And story by Jeff Johns and James Wan, Will Beale. And yeah. Weird movie. This is when they said, alright, fuck it. We're not going to really bother tying these together anymore. Just do whatever you want. It's still tied to the same world. It is, yeah. don't, the, prob no, the problem is they don't come back to it or just League 2 to address it. Yeah, again. that's true. Like, it's the same way of how like, Avengers is to, like, you know, Winter Soldier is. It's the same. It's a vibe there, but it's the same world. And then, I don't have a lot to say about this one. We kind of talked about this one a bit last episode, actually. I don't want to say as much. It was a billion-dollar movie. Crazy. Also, Lost Kingdom now, Josh, has passed 400 million worldwide. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy, right? I don't really have thoughts on this movie because we talked about the sequel next uh, last time, so I don't I don't really want to rehash stuff again. Shazam? Think, sure, it's good. Aquaman good or Shazam good? Both. Okay, yeah. Shazam is very fun. It's it's honestly really good. It's like it's I think what? My th I think it's my third favorite DCEU movie. Behind what? I, it goes The Suicide Squad, then Wonder Woman, then Shazam. You're a James Gunn fan. <laughs> yeah. Except I'm Shazam right. Is, Shazam is really fun. I really enjoy it. I love Le Levi's performance in this. The biggest criticism this always gets is, like, the personality between Asher Angel and Zach Levi is so different. No, they're actually not. They it's really aren't. It's a kid feeling free versus a kid feeling stuck. That's literally it. It's the same... I can tell you right now that it, if I was tossed around my entire life... Never having a family, never have anything. And then all of a sudden, all my dreams come true when I say one word, I'll be fucking happy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't I don't understand that critique. I don't get it. I think that there's some weird stuff in it. I think that the monsters don't look good. Like, yeah. aesthetically look weird. I think Sandberg did a good job directing it overall. Mm -hmm. Henry Gaiden was a writer, and him and Will Beale and... No, no, sorry. Henry Gaiden and Darren Lemke were also story by credits. I think Samberg has a lot of charm with his directing. I think that the suits are really fun. I like having actual color and brightness. 
I also like that every super suit in the whole DCEU feels like they're made by different people. That's my biggest complaint with the whole MCU costume. I, I'm obsessed with the costumes, and the Justice League, looking at the lineup, they all look like they came from different cultures or places. And that's the thing, probably the thing I'll miss the most, probably DCU, because they're having a costume designer from the MCU come and do a lot of the ones. I'm like, I'll probably just feel the same again. But I digress. Shazam costumes are great. Yeah. I like the family dynamic. Josh, what is the biggest, the, the, the biggest plus in your mind of biggest pro for Shazam? I think it's really just the cast and the family. I really love this dynamic between them all. And I think every one that they cast, both young versions and the Shazam versions are really good. And biggest like con in the movie, worst part? Uh, Savan is just not that interesting of a villain. Like, I got nothing against Mark Strong. He's great. He just does not really have a lot to do with this. Isn't it Savannah? Whatever his name is. I don't care. He's a bald man with a thing in his eye. Who cares? Yup. Bald man with a thing in his eye. And as you just, <laughs> just said before, he is William... Sh- Billy Bass would be an S-tier Santa Claus. Yes. Bill snaps for you, too. This was very fun. I, I said before many times now, but, like, I agree that Savannah's bad. I think that... Setting up Black Adam in this would have made some more the, sense. Well, later also setting up setting up in this a little bit to later down the road, changing all of that is hilarious. Oh, very much so. And we'll get to that in a minute. But like, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't have a lot of problems with this movie. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's pretty fun. I love it. It's great. I love it. It's great. And that brings us to the longest title of the series, mm-hmm. Birds of Prey, and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Directed by Kathy Ann and written uh, by Christina Hodson. I love it. And Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie was a producer in this, fun fact. I also love it. I did not when I first watched it. I came out of the theater with you and my friend Todd thinking, this is good, but I have a lot of issues with this one. And I still have a lot of issues with it. I think if you take it as its own, it's way more fun. If you take it on the idea of uh, these characters in a greater world, it's not as fun. Oh, I, d- I don't. <laughs> it barely ties in at all. I leave it as its own thing. No, I mean, like even just think about the comic characters. Like the, the way they talk about certain... The movie to me feels a little bit like also some like Green Arrow erasure in some parts. I'm like I'm like that sucks. I really liked Marlis with Winstead as Hella Bardinelli. I think I think the whole cast is really good. My my biggest issue with it is this is the DCEU's first R rated movie, and like they've if the whole time it feels like they were unsure if it was going to be rated R, and it's so bizarre to me. I I don't get it. It's just like they will go there with the violence and some things. But it feels like that they were too scared to. I don't know. It I liked me. that Harley's accent was better in this one than the last one. Oh, for sure. And all the whole movie came down to a, a small little breakfast sandwich. Hmm. Um, I don't like that. I hate that they, they, they named the kid Cassandra Kane. They could have changed it to any other name. It would have been fine. I've been told by you and many other people that this is a complete butchering the character. I'm like, okay. I'm not going to argue against it. I mean, yeah. It'd be weird if they made, like... If I made it like a twelve-year-old boy who was like super into like trucks, name him Joel Miller for The Last of Us. That'd be a weird change. Yeah, it's like that would be wrong. So I just, the name can matter. I think overall it's fun. I think the movie calls something about Pooh and a Diamond is very fun, and mm-hmm. the fact that Hugh McGregor plays a very flamboyant black mask is very fun. And like I yeah. like cross, I can like crossbows. He's he's great as Black Mask. I loved him in this. And he was had a very explosive performance. Haha. Ha. I, I think David Zaz was pretty bad, like pretty terrible in this. The did you character. Say David, did you say David Zaz? <laughs> <laughs> that true. Uh, <laughs> Victor Zaz. I think about Zazlav, who also has been a, a villain for DC. Yeah, that was um, a, the the way they changed Zaz in this was certainly interesting. But that kind of goes with most of the DC EU, just the way they changed some characters. <laughs> Overall, fun time. Um, would watch again. I really like I, it. Now we have the movie I think is among the bottom, um, which you liked for some reason from 2020, Wonder Woman 84. Okay, in my defense, I need to see it again because I have not seen it since I saw it in theaters. So my opinion could have vastly changed. But from what I remember, there are things that I still like about it. <laughs> it has Pedro Pascal in it. Love him. He's great. I love It's great, but it could be better. From what I remember, I loved how much of a throwback this was to the cheesy, campy, like seventies superhero movies, like the Richard Donner Superman movie. It felt like that through and through, and I really appreciate it for that. But I also understand that is not what people were looking for or wanted. 
I get people don't like that. I understand it. And yes, this film has many problems. I think Cheetah as a villain could have been interesting, but she got sidelined and wasn't that great. The whole thing of getting wished into another person's body is such a strange thing. I don't know why they had to act like that there were rules to how a magic wishing rock worked. I don't get that. The way everything is resolved it is too cheesy and campy, at least for me. The The action was not where it could have been. Again, there's problems. I get it. And there's probably will be more when I rewatch it. I still liked it. I don't think it's anywhere near the top anymore, but who knows? All your problems you also are like tenfold for me. I think the cheesiness is fine. I think the problem of her raping a man and then smiling about it later to him in person is really fucking awful. I don't like the whole idea of like depicting Middle East people as like we want weapons and like give us the, like uh, the way they depicted a lot of people came you off know, very racist and bad, especially knowing what we know about Gal Gadot. A lot of it, you know, like it, it treated a lot of people with issues in the Middle East as very bad. I don't like the way a lot of those handled, issues were handled at all. I think the Wishing Rock was stupid <laughs> the entire time. I think the idea of like renounce your wish, okay, and then everyone um, does. <laughs> Also, making this canon to the DCU means that this is the same world that happened in Man of Steel. Which makes no goddamn no sense. sense. No sense. Um, like, everything else before us, like, yeah, Shazam, Birds of Prey, okay, this, that could be the same world, sure. This one, I, it, it breaks my version with that so much. I like the Invisible Jet. That's funny. I think it's dumb that she can just do that now. I don't um, understand how she can fly, really. She just takes lightning and whips it around. It's not. And also, she can't do that again in the future. She stopped being able to. Or forgot how. I don't know. I just think it's a pretty not great movie. I remember I think I gave like probably three stars. It probably would go down to like one at this point. Do you um, think it's that bad? Yes. Wow. I don't like it. I love Chris Pine, but I think the issue is out. And I, I liked parts of this. I like Peter Pascal. I think a lot of stuff in this is stupid. I think Cheetah's great. I don't. I don't like the whole nerd. Oh, I'm not noticed. I'll be a villain thing. That always happens, and that's dumb. Uh, that leads us so into a Snyder Cut somehow. Was that the next one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Because that was 2020. This is 2021. But we're in the pandemic movies, Josh. That's true. Which we're still in, everyone. Please, if you can, wear a mask in a big group. Um, the pandemic never ended. It just ended because of political reasons. Anyway, Justice League, Snyder Cut. Good movie, I think. Good movie. Think. Very, very long. long. You can make it three hours and be fine. Um, we got people sniffing sweaters like because it's... Yeah, no, that's, that's needed. I actually like that scene in, in theory of the sweater sniffing. Mm-hmm. This is what the hard. This is the fact of the. This is the hard hitting journalism podcast, y'all. Remember, we're under news and entertainment on Spotify, so <laughs> I think that the the idea of like worshiping a deity, like that's what they see him as. That yeah. makes more. It makes it makes it look. And they're like singing a hymn to him, basically. That makes sense, and that's cool. It's too long. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of goes with the whole movie. If you cut out like half the slow motion, it'll be better. If you cut out, like, make half the awkwardly long scenes, it'll be better. I do think that this really, really works, though, if you take it as, like, just the, the six-part chunks they have it in. It's cool. I like Cyborg. Yeah, a I lot like of... Cyborg's actually a character. Yeah, a lot of stuff that was a big problem in the theatrical one is made a lot better in this one, that's for sure. It still follows the main beats of that, of that version, but it's done a lot better. But, yeah, the biggest problem is its length. It's way too long but but again it's actually pretty good but again it's got problems it's not perfect but it's probably snyder's best movie maybe to me it probably is the man of steel but that's fine well it's a good that i don't think he should be releasing movies and then say hey i have a new director's edition coming out soon don't like rebel moon don't get me started on that um i think this movie is fun ish i don't think it should be rated r it should have no reason to be that was so stupid um, I think it being four hours is dumb. I think that the scenes with the mascara are really cool. I think the scenes with Atlantis are still cool. We get to have actually see Mera and Volko and stuff like happening. There's We get to have a Green Lantern at the end. Actually, two in this movie. We get to see early on as well as in the very end. Wait, no. That we don't see. We saw, sorry, that was cut out of this version even because the studio said no, which is so funny to me. They couldn't let him have a Green Lantern in his own Elseworld story. We got to see um, a Martian Manhunter, which was nonsense because of who he was and how he did nothing in the past movies. Yeah. Also, the whole thing of like, a, a Martian Manhunter 
pretending to be Martha Kent, talking to Lois Lane, bugs me so much. That was a great scene until the reveal of Bartleby Hunter. Yeah. It undoes the entire scene. I don't complain right now a lot, but it's a long movie. This movie does a lot of problems. I think it's fun. I think it's better than the previous one. I would probably watch the 2017 one again before I watch this one again because it's shorter. It's it's also a wild experience just seeing that one compared to the Snyder Cut. I think wait, maybe one day in the podcast we'll do a whole episode about this movie oh, because boy. it's four hours. We, we can say a lot of stuff in 45 minutes about it. True. Let's move past because, again, it's a four-hour movie. You can't say that a lot. The Suicide Squad, your favorite, apparently. I really love this movie. It's, it's very good. And, yes, there are certain like just gun jokes that like either go on for too long or don't work quite as well but i would say overall his style the characters the action everything he does amazing fantastic absolutely loved it is it his best movie to me no it's fine have you when was the last time you watched it listen listen i think i think it's still a four-star movie i think it's it's technically speaking a great movie i don't like gun style i've said many times is it his style or is it his humor though both Really? You don't like his style? No, I never have. I love his filmmaking think, style in this. It's my least favorite thing about his, about his movies is his Interesting. style. Interesting. I think that nothing feels real when I'm watching a, a gun film. Interesting, because because nothing feels real. Nothing feels real when I'm watching a Snyder film. Like all, nothing in the, the costumes. Like they all don't feel. They feel like costumes and not like tangible things to me. I start watching Peacemaker finally. I'm like, it's fine. I listen, listen, listen. Don't hurt me. I like Nanawe, Shark, uh, King Shark. I like Rat Catcher 2. I like Idris Elba's, not Blood Peacemaker, Sport. Um, Bloodsport. I almost said Sportsmaster, which is a different DC character. I hated Peacemaker in this. I hated John Cena's Peacemaker in this movie. Like the entire, like not like a, oh, that's a bad guy. I'm supposed to hate him. Like I hated the character as the way it was written. And I think that it's overall a fun movie I'd watch again. But like, I'd rather watch other things on this list first. Again, it's good. It's great. It's whatever. I, Gun's not my friend. Wait, not the mean <laughs> one. Like I, uh, I'm going to say the gun's not my type. Perf- Don't perfect, change that. Perfect quote. Gun is not my friend. I like Hugh James Gunn as a person a lot. I think his movie, I love Guardians 1. I think it's the only time I've ever really liked Gun style has been in that movie. This one is fun. I think it's based on the recency bias of other movies around it, I think I'm looking at the list of movies that go up and down like before it and after it is the best of the bunch for a bit. Because ne- next up after that movie, Josh, is your favorite movie in the whole DCEU, Black Adam. That was really the next one. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, um, oof. This is this is more a Dwayne Johnson movie than a DC movie. I will say, Black Adam was over a year later, which helped, I think, for the DC universe. Yeah, but. It's it's a mess, but compared to like other recent DC stuff, like uh, Flash and Aquaman two, like it's probably more fun to watch. Can I just say we had one movie for DC in um twenty twenty two. We had four this past year. We had two DC movies in twenty twenty two: The Batman and um. I'm DC EU. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Adam said it's more fun than what movies? Uh, Flash and Aquaman 2, maybe. I would need to rewatch them, but also I don't want to rewatch them. <laughs> I don't want to... Aquaman 2 is fine. We'll get... We'll, we'll... We're not even going to address the movie. The humor of this movie and the action of this movie is probably is better than both Flash and Aquaman 2. Maybe... Okay, maybe not action, because Aquaman 2 is pretty good action. But yes, it's still not good. It has many problems. <laughs> it undoes everything of Shazam in terms of the uh, setting up stuff. <laughs> It's so funny. I think Black Adam is not good. I think it's probably a two-star movie out of five on Letterboxd for me. I, I haven't checked, but that, that's what I'm guessing. That's how it's been for me since I saw it. I um, it's oof to say the least. He's not playing Black Adam. No, Teth Adam is not who he's playing. Also, they call, they call him Teth Adam, and it's so funny because like, yes, ancient Egypt Adam, not Adam. I think that it's bad, but I do like the costume. Yeah, the co- the costumes for everyone in this are pretty good. There's many, many problems with it. Would I watch it again? Yes. Remember, I gave no or nay on every piece of Black Adam news because of one thing. His ears aren't pointy, and he doesn't have the fucking widow's peak hair. You know what? That's Perfect. still my opinion. And, of course, uh, this led to the all-time greatest end credits scene that totally went places with Superman returning. 
Oh my god. That's right. <laughs> this movie's an instant <laughs> nugget. That's so funny. Hold on. This whole movie existed just to set up a Black Adam versus Superman movie, and it didn't fucking happen. Amazing. He wouldn't, he wouldn't fight Shazam. He had. He didn't want to. Which is what Shazam 3 was supposed to be. It's what Shazam 2 was once supposed to be. I thought that it was always supposed to be Shazam 3 was supposed to be him versus Black Adam. At one point, it was going to be Black Adam. Okay. And then they kept pushing back things, and then things kept changing. Gotcha. Also, Dwayne Johnson, you signed on in 2007 for Shazam. Why do you change now? Insane. This movie is... I don't have a lot of thoughts. Do we, talk, we didn't talk about the podcast. Did, but I thought we did. I don't remember. Did we? I don't, I don't know. know anymore. I can check. Should I? Let's do that. This is so important for our series, for our episodes. We might have touched on it briefly, but that would be it. Yeah, we did, we did not talk about it as an episode. I think we both said we watched it. That was about it. But um, n- moving on to next, which was, ironically, Shazam! Fearing of the Gods was next. I liked it. I did too. And again, it should be Black Adam should be a step in that same direction. Nope, not related. Yeah. Uh, Fearing of the Gods, we actually did a whole episode on You guys can check that one out. But we both liked it. I think we don't need to dive too much into next week. We did a whole episode on it already. But it was fun. It had a unicorn eating, tasting the rainbow with the funniest mm-hmm. ad for Skittles. I think people were way too harsh on this movie. I'm not saying that it's avoiding criticisms. But I'm not saying that it's anywhere near as bad as people say that it is. Comparing Skittles to the Ambrosia, the Electra of the Gods, was so funny to me. I loved it. <laughs> Also, people have the same issue with Billy and Shazam feeling different. Like, no, same thing before. Not really. He is not stressed when he's Shazam. He's stressed when he's Billy. It's people with it are so strange, but whatever. We'll, we would be here all day just going over that. Uh, the Flash. I didn't watch it. I refused to watch it because as reactions. Uh, it's it's. So... You saw it for free, mind you. It's so frustrating as a movie. Because, like, you can tell that they had ideas, but it had been tossed around for years and years, and they didn't, by the end, they were just like, fuck it, we're just gonna do this, and we're gonna see what happens. And, you know, maybe if the ending wasn't what it was, maybe it could have salvaged it. But then, you know, you had the whole resurrection spheres that is just awful in every conceivable way. And the more I think on it, the worse it gets. And then you have the goddamn ending that Hold literally... on. Did you say resurrection spears? Spheres. I'm look, oh. I'm tired. Uh, um, spears would be funnier. Um, this anyways. Movie has a, this movie has, like, pulling people out of the grave for cameos. Um, I think most offensive, most offensive part of that is probably either George Reeves or Christopher Reeve. I think George um, Reeves is probably the more offensive one because he took his own life because of being Superman. Superman, yeah, that's that. And, <sighs> and then you had the guy that played um, Old Flash in the Flash show being like, "Yeah, I was never anywhere near a set for this. I don't know what the fuck that is." Same with Nick Cage said he didn't do anything with it that they showed on the screen. Yeah, and crazy. Um, but but then the ending where literally no lesson is learned and it's just like ha 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 ha. I'm just like so everything that had happened here completely. Also, pointless. there's George Clooney in it as Batman again, as Bruce Wayne. Yeah, in the in the final scene, and it's just like so you know the whole thing about how don't change the past because everything will get screwed up. He still changes the past and then you know still messes things up, but it's done in a you know humorous way. But he still wins in the end. So I'm just like. So we've learned nothing, and we have gained nothing isn't, from this. Cool. Isn't, like the last frame, isn't the last frame of the film like his teeth being knocked out? Yeah, because there was a weird joke. The, the humor in this movie is also so strange. But when he uh, both gets slash loses his powers, he like the lighting goes through him, and it chips one of his teeth out, and like he glues it back into his mouth, and it's never addressed again until that moment. I, I can't comment on this movie. I get Renee because it's a Miller. Uh, Blue Beetle happened. Yay, good movie. Yay, fun. It's got problems. It's not the it's not the greatest There's, of them all, but I would happily take it any day over the Flash. I think we'll talk about it more during a year in review, probably. But yeah. like, I think overall, it was it was really fun. The whole family liked murdering a lot. Yep. Um, I like loved Ted Cord's aesthetic of his place and the whole idea of the whole retro stuff, like being made into like like the power glove for Nintendo being a, like an actual like superhero weapon. It's so cool to me. And that and after that, we have Batman Lost Kingdom. Any thoughts on Blue Beetle before we move on to the to things I, that didn't happen? Uh, I really like Blue Beetle. Love his costume. The action was great. Loved the family. Yeah, good. Yeah. A really weird choice to have his costume melt off on his clothes. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I feel like we gotta talk about some stuff. Like what specifically? <laughs> Let's talk about some canceled stuff. There's much. There's a lot. I can't say everything. Cause I might be able to. First, also, Peacemaker technically happened. Season one. From DCEU. Yeah, the, the, the only show in the DCEU. <laughs> Which is... Stop making TV for this series, please. Make it just movies. But, like, I have seen three episodes. Peacemaker is an actual show compared to most of the MCU shows. I So, in that regard, it's a yay for me. Weird intro. Love the, the intro. I don't know what you're talking about. It's overall, I think, from what I've seen, okay. Again, same problems I have with the, this with that squad. But, like, you know what? Fun. Well, let's talk about some canceled stuff. Most recently, we have Batgirl. I am. No, actually, no. Not more recently. What? We have that. There's a separate, separate Batgirl that didn't happen as well. Huh? In March of 2017, Joss Whedon was hired to write, direct, and produce a film about That's Barbara right. Gordon. Right. I forgot about that. Had was Batgirl cast for that? I don't think so. Um, we have though. We had writer Christina Hodge, Hodgson was going to be writer. Um, we had producer set. We had like it was going to be in production in 2018, um, but we didn't step down in February because who of everything. Knows? <laughs> who knows, Josh? <laughs> uh, but then, of course, in, in July of 2021, we had Leslie Grace cast in the movie of the same name, new direction, everything. And of course, that's been completely scrapped, even though it's a finished film with like Brendan Fraser was going to be the villain as Firefly. Ironic that a villain that new version was going to be called Firefly and Whedon was going to made Firefly in the past. But I don't know. This is completely deemed not releasable. And yet the Flash was. Well, they, that, that cost way too much money. They had to. Still, this is complete bullshit. <laughs> I fucking let's, hate it. Let's talk about um, Ben Affleck's The Batman, set to be in Arkham Asylum against Deathstroke. Yeah, that one was a disappointing one to get canceled, but granted, given everything that happened to him with the Justice League reshoots, I get why he stopped doing it. Yeah, it was dumb. I was excited to see this. And of course, Alex stepped down as director. Matt Reeves decided to direct the film. Not decided. He got hired to direct the film. He's like, oh, I'm going to direct this. Um, I think it would have been Reeves, cool. Yeah, you too. And then Reeves and Affleck split parts, and then Affleck stepped away, and Rob Pattinson came in, and the whole thing changed to The Batman, which we saw. Which was good. Yep. And I, I just, it's sad to see that one gone. To yeah. Me. Batman Beyond was going to be starring Michael Keaton. It was in development. That's right. Uh, with, again, Michael Hodson. Uh, uh, Christina Hodson was going to be writing it, as well as uh, it was going to continue plot threads from The Flash and would have included Catwoman, potentially uh, Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman. Would have been interesting. And then there's apparently a potential for the future of, of according to Gunn, and Saffron, there's potential for the future of Keaton going forward still in some way. Um, but that that could be an Elseworlds thing. So, I mean, I'm, I, whatever. Yeah, your name, the idea of this Batman Beyond movie following the Flash version of, Batman, of Michael Keaton. See, the problem is, is that in the Flash, Keaton's Batman solved crime in Gotham. That's why he stopped being Batman because there was... I just, know. Which is just like, so then there's no point in this. So this wouldn't need to happen. Also, that's dumb. I yes, solved all very of crime. stupid. Like, out of any older Batman story you could tell... I solved all of crime with the lamest idea. We also had, in theory, an untitled Black Adam sequel. No. Um, no. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Moving on. Uh, Black Canary was going to oh, be yeah. an HBO Max exclusive film centered around, around Dinah Lance from uh, c- continuing with Journey Smollett uh, from Birds of Prey. I, I loved her version of it. I would have happily seen more. Yeah, me too. And you also could have, you also could have introduced Green Arrow this way. Yeah. And show them just like show her just daily dating a guy named Oliver. Maybe on Tinder, you're starting to see them just chat. Like you could have it be like <laughs> such a subtle thing. <laughs> That's funny to me. Imagine Oliver Queen using Tinder. That'd he be, would. That'd be funny. Yeah, I'm fine with this. We also had an untitled uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths film in August 2022. They were uh, discussing this idea, and the plot would have had, had basically the plot, of, the plot of the Flash movie. A bunch of you know universes colliding, whatever. How the hell would that have worked? <laughs> I don't know. I think they would probably try to get Keaton again, would be the idea. Poor Keaton. It's just like, he signs up for one thing, and all of a sudden he's just being bombarded with, like, you're going to be in this, yeah. this, and he's just like, wait, what? And he was almost going to be their Nick Fury or whatever in the reset. Whatever. How the fuck would that work? I don't know, man. Cyborg movie would have, um, in April of 2014, Ray Fisher was cast as Cyborg. It was um, that long before? Wow. 
Yeah, around the same time as uh, Ezra. Ezra was also cast two days after the Flash show came out. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, Joe Morton was going to rep- reprise his role as Silas Stone, and all of that was cut during post-production, pretty much, of Justice League, because things kept changing. And then they pushed it to his, his own movie to 2020, a lot, and then kept getting delayed, etc., and it went away eventually. And at one point, it was going to be maybe directed by Snyder or Rick Famuyiwa. Fam- Family, you, do you know what's the name? I, I know who you're talking about. He's directed a lot of The Mandalorian. Yes, he's a good director. I can't think of his, I can't, no, I, I'm sorry, I don't have pronounce his name. But Rick Famu, F A M U Y I W A. Sure. I think this would be even fine. I am so sad we'll never really see a Cyborg film. But Cyborg doesn't have as many of his own villains that people know any in mainstream. So it would be interesting to see who they pick from because he started out as a Titan on Titans. Yeah. A Deadshot movie with Will Smith. Playing Floyd Lawton. What is this? Okay, this list is so funny. What? This li- a Deadshot movie? Yeah, you didn't, you're you not aware of this? No. It was going to happen, and they changed it to scheduling conflicts. Interesting. And then they got pushed back too much. And it got favored, and then eventually became other things. Also, a Deathstroke movie. In October 2017, a film centered around uh, Deathstroke was announced in development with Gareth Evans attached as a screenwriter. Why? Um, he described the story as a dark, unforgiving origin story, similar to, to Korean noir films. That's who like, Evans was a writer, and he was, that's who he was describing the story. And that's, of course, changed now. Also, a Flash sequel was, was scrapped. In 2022, it was revealed that the script for a sequel to The Flash had been completed by David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick. Oh, never. It, it, the realization of that apparently depended on how well the first film did. Mm-hmm. And as we know, people didn't love it. Um, yeah. A Green Lantern movie, as well as a Green Lantern Core movie, both never happened. Yeah. Gotham City Sirens with Catwoman, Harley Quinn, and Poison Ivy. Also never happened. Sad. Harley Quinn versus versus the Joker was a movie that was going to happen with Jared Leto and Margot Robbie. Wasn't that the one that was going to have them on, like, Dr. Phil for, like, therapy? Yes. <laughs> Love it. Our Man was going to happen. The Who Man? He's from the Justice Society. Ah, I don't know who that is. He's a cool character. Untitled Constantine TV series. A new one. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you're going to do another one after you canceled the last one. And JJ Abrams was going to produce it. Interesting. Untitled Joker film with Leto. No. Uh, that guy eventually got changed in Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Apparently they had to pick one or the other. Thank God. And, and they chose Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. An Untitled Justice League sequel. It would have been Justice League called. It would have been called Justice League Part 2 uh, with Snyder coming back again. And we all know that Snyder's plans changed a lot. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, when you look at what his plans were with what, you know, DC wanted to do, it would not have worked at all. I'm going to speed through all these because there's a lot more. Oh, boy. Ready for it, Josh? Sure. Justice League Dark with uh, Del Toro began developing it in 2013. Then it changed, um, and he was no longer attached by 2015. And eventually, it became tossed around much more times uh, with, like, Defender-style vibe, apparently, they're going for uh, from the TV show, the Netflix show. A really cool concept. I would have loved this movie. Didn't happen. Does this list have the J.J. Abrams stuff that he was supposed to make? <laughs> He's on notes for a lot of these. Okay. Because yeah, like I just... this one, he was on notes as an executive producer. He would have produced it for HBO Max. Um, that changed. HBO... He also was Abrams was going to do. I'm sure it's on the list about with. It's not on this list actually. Oh yeah, Abrams was going to make a Superman film with not with uh who's going to produce a Superman film but not be Kal El. Yeah. It was never fully confirmed what was going to happen with it. It's it's so it's so funny to me that uh, Abrams signed like a giant multi million dollar deal with Warner Brothers to produce stuff, mainly to probably get him to be their Feige for DC. And he's just like, yeah, we got some projects in the work, and never made a goddamn thing. It took his money and ran. It's amazing. He made up front two fifty million. Insane. Good for him. The Krypton in twenty fourteen. Uh, David S. Square was announced as a development TV series called Krypton, which is not the same thing as the Krypton show we got. Interesting. Different thing. And it would have been adjacent to the Arrowverse and DCEU. What does that mean? How is it adjacent to both? I don't know. Lobo. <laughs> Somehow not starring Momoa. Although apparently he might be Momo, Not Momo. Lobo now. <laughs> Momoa <laughs> might be Momoa in the future. Uh, Madam X, Josh. Who the um, fuck is that? Madame Xanadu from, is a... I can do a whole episode on Superman stories about her. Different, interesting character from Justice League Dark, kind of attached to that-ish side of things. Uh, there was going to be a TV show with 
also Abrams going to be producing. Angela Robbins was set to write it. We had an untitled Man of Steel sequel with a thousand different notes about this because it went through so many different changes. And eventually, <laughs> we just got Man of Steel instead. At one point, Matthew Baum was going to be making a film, and that changed as well. That could have been good. I would have really liked that. Then we got the Metal Men, Josh. The who? Metal Men. Aren't you aware of them? I'm not aware of the me- of these Metal Men. Also, DC like C list, D list characters. It would in two thousand in April two thousand seven. They were first in development. Then it changed in 2013 and then 2021. And things just kept shifting with them until eventually they were gone again. Had no plan for the future of the franchise. New Gods, I was excited for. Uh, in March 2018, Ava DuVarney signed on to direct a film centered around the characters of New Gods. Um, which you're now aware, really cool stuff with like Jack Kirby very much did a lot of stuff with them, helped, helped create them in the same kind of lineups like Dark Side and stuff. They would have had like Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, Granny Goodness, High Father, a lot of cool characters. Um, we actually saw Granny Goodness in the Snyder Cut very, very briefly. That could have been really interesting. I'm That's one of the projects I got canceled at. I'm like, oh, that's sad. Nightwing, a movie I should direct now that it, now I have an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, in February 2017, a film centered around Dick Grayson Nightwing was in development with Chris McKay uh, and Bill Dubuque signed on to as director and screenwriter, respectively. And McKay said, up until recently, that he was like, I'm still attached. It's still happening, I think. <laughs> and then that's changed not too long ago because... You know, shit happened. Untitled Black Manta film. I don't care. It would have been about The Trench. How do you feel about that? The Trench is one of those movies that I'm just like, on paper, this is such a stupid thing to announce. But also when you think back to that section of that movie, I'm like, you know what? This could actually like be pretty cool if they get the right people. But announcing that before, like, you know, Man of Steel 2 was stupid. Yeah, very stupid. Plastic Man. Um, <laughs> the fact is- that we get... This, I would love that. Give me Ben Schwartz as Plastic Man. This shit is so hilarious when you look at all the stuff they announced because it's literally just throwing things at the wall and seeing what will stick, and none of them did. It would have been a comedy action adventure film. With uh, it was in development with Amanda Idoko uh, hired to write the film, and Kat Vasco was hired to, re- to do a rewrite of it and stuff. And the project was reworked into a female centered film, which also confuses me. Interesting. It's called Plastic Man. What will, who would be Plastic Man? I'm not like saying this is like a sexist thing. I'm like, I'm like what, what the plot would have been. Yeah. Plastic Man is Cause, dead. Because like, I'm fine if you do a new version of the character as a woman. That's awesome. That's great. Like, just do that then. Like, I'm just curious. Okay, if you just call her Plastic Woman, also cool. But what is the story? Is it a new character? Cool. Then we have Static Shock, also announced <laughs> at DC Fandom. They announced a Static Shock movie? At DC Fandom in 2020, a live action centered film around Static was revealed in, in development I... with Michael B. Jordan joining uh, the public production team alongside producer Regina Hoedlin in October. And guess where it was originally going to go? HBO Max. Guess where it went? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Untitled Valzad series with, of course, Abrams set to work on it. Michael B. Jordan was set to be a producer as well. Also, guess where it's set to go? HBO Max, guess where it went? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> the Wonder Twins. <laughs> In February of 2022, a film centered around Zan and Jane, the Wonder Twins, who first appeared, mind you, in the Super Freds, was in development for guess where? HBO, HBO Max. Max. Guess where it went? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> um, Isabella May was going to be in it and KJ Apa. What a... What a choice. What a combo. KJ Apa, I don't think it's bad from what I've seen it. I've seen it oh, no. the Riverdale. He's fine. Yeah. Zaslav had, he made a mandate that DC Films uh, will focus on theatrical releases around this time, and then this particular style was deemed as too niche. They wouldn't do it. Honestly, one move from Zaslav, I'm not against changing this. It's but It was a movie that I'm surprised got as far as it did. Untitled Wonder Woman in 1984 sequel. Maybe set in modern day maybe set in the 90s who knows i just want to know what was the point of setting wonder woman 84 in the 80s because like by the, by then the 80s nostalgia craze had kind of died out because stranger things was bleeding it dry i just think that the idea of that was like you could do it so much with like the 100 years she was gone and they don't really they could have done world war ii they could have done you know and other wars korea vietnam that would also, based on how this one went, it would have done so tastefully. <laughs> Dear God, a Zatanna movie. 
Guess where it was supposed to go? HBO Max. Guess where it went? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> this, I'm sensing no. a recurring theme here. Okay. The fact that all this was slated for HBO Max was so stupid first off. Yeah. You they... know who was hired as huh? Do you know who was hired as a writer for this? Who? Emerald Fennel. Oh, oh my god, I remember that. If you're all not aware, she just made Salt Burn. Also, AT&T were the ones who revealed this movie was going to be made. Yeah, when AT&T owned Warner Brothers, that was a weird time of them. Just, like, kind of over-relying on streaming, but also not... I don't know. It was very strange. Yeah, that was on this list, everything. But we also had things like the Green Lantern Corps specifically... There's a whole like, DC slate they first announced. I'm going to look up DCU original slate because it changed a few times, actually. And it's shocking how much changed, actually. You know, like Cyborg and Green Lantern coming out in 2020 was supposed to happen. The Flash, Aquaman, and in the third film in 2018. Shazam, Justice League Part 2, and a third film in, in 2019. Things just kept shifting around a lot. And I'm so glad it's over. Yeah. I don't get it. How do you fumble the bag with the best superheroes ever created on Earth? I mean, it really, I think, just comes down to a complete lack of leadership. Like, it was probably so many different people and so many different levels just greenlining stuff. And then, you know, through various stages of stuff and through reception of other things, they would go, okay, we're going to cancel this and now we're going to greenlight this and we're going to see what happens. And it's just... It's frustrating. I they really did need a Kevin Feige type person, and I'm happy they have one now. When James, they Gunn. have two. They have two, which is even better. Saffron as well. Um, and then we move us to our super weird story, which is the last segment of the day, and it's a segment where Josh knows nothing about nothing. I know something about something. Yep, I put, couldn't have said it better myself. And that's I'm quoting you. <laughs> this is a subject where comic books and superheroes have had a lot of weird, interesting things that have happened. A lot of weird characters introduced. A lot of weird stories that have happened. And Josh doesn't read a lot of comic books, so this is a good way to let him know this is a weird world. Yep. Let's talk about Beppo. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Are you ever have you heard the name Beppo? Should I have? Have you ever heard the term the Super Monkey? You're saying words that I don't understand. You know about Crypto? The, you know Crypto the Super Dog? Yeah. There's also Beppo the Super Monkey. <laughs> That wasn't in the League of Super Pets movie. Well, actually, the League of Super Pets movie didn't take, I think, anything from the Legion of Super... The Legion of Super Pets came first. Okay. Um, with, with, including Titus the dog, Byron, Wizzy, etc. And I'll do more episodes on those as well. <laughs> Don't worry. But today we're going to focus on Beppo the Super Monkey from the Legion of Super Pets. He was originally a test animal used by Jor-El. What? Yeah, he's a Kryptonian. Okay. He's not actually he's not actually a monkey. He just looks like a monkey, he's like an earth monkey. <laughs> you know, has his, has the exact same genomes of a monkey and everything, but well, it's not it's a monkey, like, guys, I swear. It's like how Kala looks like a human. He just looks like a monkey. You know, looks like fine. a human, has all the organs of a human and everything like a human, but he's not a human, guys, I swear. Can literally breed with humans as well, somehow. So he's a te- Beppo was a, a monkey who was a test animal used by Jarell during his space flight development project to see if his son could survive space travel. <laughs> so, so he stuck a monkey in a spaceship and threw it into space, basically, <laughs> and stowed away on board of the craft. He also was apparently on the craft that Superman was on as well. Because uh, of course to. he was. Because who else wasn't? It would have made more sense if he was on the same craft as Supergirl. Right. Well, that's, someone else was, actually, I think. Of course. Anyway, Beppo turns up years after Superboy has been adopted by the kids. Oh, Superboy? Hold on. <laughs> Superboy's a oh, different he... person. Hold on. I'm addressing this. No, it's kal They just call him Superboy because he's a boy at the time. That's uh, dumb. Okay. Um, I, I looked at the thing. Uh, so after he's adopted by the kids, and initially causes Superman much trouble with the superpowered mischief. Eventually, Superman leads Beppo out into deep space and leaves him there. <laughs> so that he can't cause much more further trouble beppo later returns anyway and encounters supergirl who introduced him to crypto the super, crypto the super dog and streaky the super cap he went on to join the legion of super pets do i know more about beppo i guess he had an array of powers like what i'm tr- it's kind of unclear actually same powers apparently as a kryptonian adult it looks like but they are right. a pro- a proportionate to his smaller size and species. 
So imagine like him with like tiny heat vision. I don't know. <laughs> T- uh, tiny monkey heat vision. <laughs> <laughs> um, he caused a havoc for the Kents, uh, as I said earlier. He apparently set off Fourth of July fireworks. Uh, stored in the, in the Kent garage, causing explosions to the Kent farm. The Kents, uh, when he, uh, when Clark sent him away to space, the Kents assume he got lost somewhere out in space when he didn't return. <laughs> um, and they, so they just assume Clark killed their monkey, I guess. Um, <laughs> and all of that part is told in a flashback by teenage Clark. Because of course it is. Also, yeah, Superboy is correct, because he was, there's actually a whole series of Superboy comics where it's like like toddler superman all right um so that's when he knew monkey but when, that's when Beppo was a thing so i think i need to go to do at some point now a hill episode on the legion of super pets because i'm sure you're curious now about crypt the super dog comet comet the super horse streaky the super cat those are all real characters by dc comics okay i just think Beppo was neat i want to share his uh the fact that clark tried to murder a monkey in his face that came with him <laughs> What the fuck? And that's the end of our show, Josh. Where can people... Oh, also, if you're new to the show, um, you should join the Discord, which is now in the description, um, and as well as our subreddit, which is also in the Discord. And you can email us show at podgeekspeak.gmail.com for all your questions, comments, concerned, or tweet us with hashtag geekspeakpod or at geekspeakpod on Twitter. Josh, where can people find you online? I'm at some places. I'm on Twitter at J underscore Ruddy28, Instagram at J underscore Ruddy16, Letterboxd at Nerd for Film28, and YouTube at Josh Rudolph. You can find me oh, so inconsistent, Josh. I don't you care. can find me on Twitter and at the Theater Nerd and on TikTok and Instagram at that nerd and theater. Thank you all so much for listening. Any final thoughts, Josh, on Beppo, DCEU, the news, or luck of the Irish. Uh, I'm glad the DCEU has died. Beppo will probably haunt my nightmares tonight. And luck of the Irish. You want to see a picture? Probably. And <laughs> um, luck of the Irish um, is either the funniest thing to Irish or the worst thing to the Irish. I don't know. If you're Irish, let us know. Here you go, Josh. Here's Beppo. He wore a red handkerchief cape thing and a and tidy ways and red and blue, blue shirt. Why does he have pants? Why wouldn't he have pants? He's a he's a monkey. He throw our pants. Yeah, this is gonna hop. You don't want to see you don't you don't want to see a Beppo dick? No, not particularly. All right, this will hop my night. Hold this on, my... I have. I don't show me Beppo's penis. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that's why he's wearing his pants. I have. There's also modern pictures of Beppo because he's been around a while. He's he's come back a few times like that, which is more terrifying to me. I hate everything. When he has more like actual like style and coloring, he looks worse. Anyway. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast this episode. You know, do good. Don't die. Beppo all the way. We stand Beppo here. Sure. F- final thoughts on Beppo? Dumb. Kill that bitch. Dumb? Oh. Okay, bye. <laughs>